At their core, dance is integral to bumblebees. Carefully choreographed, their movements articulate far more than words can say. Thus, it is entirely appropriate that the bumblebees play host to an event that tells its stories through motion, through action, through teamwork, and toward a common goal of betterment and achievement, the Marble League. Welcome everyone to this sparkling new Super Hive Stadium I'm Greg Woods, the Queen of Queens, the ruler of Buzzia, wiggles her wings to ceremoniously open these games, and with a collective sigh of relief, the wait is finally over for the most prestigious event in all of Marble Athletics. Marble League 2023 is here. You know, those bees claim to be working, but they only seem interested in the boutonniere that I wore for the opening ceremony. Hmm. Well, anyway, as we get ready to take a look at this sample run for our very first event, we saw this in the qualifiers where the teams have to weave their way through the honeycomb and they have to stay together because the third marble, that is the one that counts for the time. So yes, you can have two blazing fast marbles at the lead, but this is a team event through and through. You will see that theme all throughout these Marble League games that are hosted by the Bumblebees. And of course, we have to give a shout out to our patrons. Thank you all for your support. We've got a message here that says, Hey, Raldo, if you can see this from where you're hiding, give us a spin. Signed, the Raldo Finders. And if you want to get behind the scenes content or have some of your messages read out, you can find out how in the video's description. Just look at this engineering marvel. Bumblebees able to build incredible things. I think we all knew that. Only appropriate that the stadium matches that too. Our first teams who will kick off the very first event in this Marble League are in the blocks. And you see the hosts up there in lane one. It's Bumblebees, Team Plasma, Momo, and the Wisps. 
Plasma got out to a quick early lead, but the Bumblebees up top have a two marble advantage, but that is coming down. Remember, it's the third marble, but the Bumblebees are staying fairly tight. Switchbacks right here. Other teams getting strung out. Plasma, they look pretty good. Who's going to be the third? Oh, Momo Momo is furious. Apparently the captain was holding the whole team back by the looks of it. They are not very happy. Bumblebees are, though. And already one run in. We've got some marbles that are not happy. Mellow Yellow in lane two, quick out of the gate this time. But the Savage Speeders are edging forward with their lead marble. Pinky's down here on the bottom lane. Gliding Glacier's up there in lane number one. But it's Savage Speeders out in front. Their third will cross the line before almost every other marble on any of the other teams. 17-14 is their time. They will move on along with the Pinkies. Then round one, heat two. Now it's Team Galactic, O-Rangers, Snowballs, and the Thunderbolts. Oh, Snowballs have lost one marble already way back. Oh, Snowfall is out of the track, apparently. The Snowballs fans are absolutely distraught and the incident is under investigation. Apparently, the JMA, let's see here, getting word that the teams have two or more marbles. If they're out of the track, that means an immediate disqualification. Okay, it was Snowdrift, not Snowfall, that went out. So they are disqualified. That is interesting. We'll have to dive into that a little bit more when we get time. Oh, Crazy Cat's Eyes. They've had an incident. Green is out but is still on the track. So that is going to be at least a one second penalty if everybody else finishes as they run right now. In doing so, that would essentially give the win to the Raspberry Racers. Now, of course, in the rules, for every marble that you have stopped on the track, in your track, whereas Snowballs, uh, they left the track, you have a one second penalty added on. All right, after four heats, Snowballs are disqualified. There you see ninth through 16th. Team Plasma does get some points, but they fall just outside of the top eight. Rojo Rollers, Shining Swarm, Momo in there. But our top eight, they have seen this course once before. Pinkies, Crazy Cat Size, Team Galactic, and the host Bumblebees. Bumblebees keeping that tie. Oh, it's happened again! Crazy Cat Size have lost a marble in the upper third of this course for the second run in a row. They have to go quickly now. They have to try to make this up. Where's that second? What is the margin? That is going to be very close. And they didn't get it by four hundredths of a second. Crazy Cat Size because of the penalty. Wow, they still do move on, however, and look at this heat. Full of Marble League champions. Wisps up top, Savage Speeders in lane two, O-Rangers, Raspberry Racers. The Speeders, now they bunch back up together, only one length between them, and suddenly they lose touch with that fourth marble. That's okay. Across the line they come, but who fought for second place? It's the Wisps. By a tenth over the O-Rangers and the Raspberry Racers, they are out as well. There you see fifth on down, a Rangers get fifth, Raspberry Racers, Pinkies, and the host, Bumblebees, come in eighth and get eight points. Now to the top four to determine the first medal of the Marble League. It's the Cats, Team Galactic, the Wisps, and the Speeders. Crazy Cat's Eyes are off to a very fast start. They haven't lost a marble yet, but they have on every run so far today. Their advantage is growing. Their fourth marble is ahead of everyone else. Crazy Cat Size will cruise to a gold. Sixteen to four, and after two runs that had one penalty apiece, they finally put it together when it mattered most. Excellent view from up top. Look at how close everybody else was in that battle for second place. Whoa, whoa. Down there on that bottom lane, making some moves to hold on to the silver. And that goes to the Savage Speeders. Midnight Wisps get third place. 
Crazy Cat's Eyes won this event in the qualifier. They were in Group A. That is also their sixth gold medal in Marble League history. Savage Speeders and the Midnight Wisps round out the Podium Galactic just misses out. Snowballs will have some work to do, disqualified and get a zero. And already we've heard some grumbling from some of the teams, be it from their coaches or from their captains. I think we'll have some storylines, but you will want to stay tuned just to make sure. Second event coming up will be Steeplechase. We hope you will join us. With only a day's break after the first event, of the 2023 Marble League, our competitors are back, this time for a version of Steeplechase. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Starting to get settled in a little bit, but this one is going to throw you some curveballs. Each team runs four marble athletes down this track, and it's the first and second marbles times that get added together, and that is your score. If you knock over one of the sticks on the jumps, however, you will get a penalty second. If you don't finish most of your marbles, well, then you are disqualified. There you see the running order. Teams will go down one apiece. And up first, appropriately, the Bumblebees. Off they go, following what was a top 10 result in the first event. Oh, we've got a stick down, and we have a marble that is caught, and another marble caught as well. So... Just like in the Freak Marbles Tournament, a very strong headwind that is slowing these marbles down, and you have to wonder if that is contributing to the inability to make these jumps. Crazy Cat Size have knocked down one stick, they make contact with another, and dislodge the final, while one of their marbles is stuck. Blue Eye farther up the course. So you see the number of DNFs, the sticks knocked down, the penalties that come with it, and their placement as already we're into run number three, the Gliding Glaciers. They knock down one of those six, knock down another, but they will get all four marbles across and they stayed together as a team pretty well. But those two penalty points, there you see the dislodged jumps, put them in second place. Mellow Yellow. Down they come through the jumps. They all stay pretty together. They nudged one of those sticks. Oh, but they kept it on there, unable to do so in the bottom most jump. Oh no, we did get a dislodge up there and a marble that was stuck. Only a few seconds. This event in length, but so much can go wrong. Just like that for the Midnight Wisps who got bronze in the Honeycomb Team Pursuit. Oh, so now we are hearing that they're under investigation. It looks like a stick may have possibly fallen before they got to it. Okay, so fourth place out of five, it's still not great, but they avoided what could have been worse. These gusty winds apparently dislodged one of the sticks, and if you watch it in slow-mo replay, you'll probably be able to see that. They dodged one there, but perhaps seeing that ahead of them got them a bit out of their train. Oh, two sticks gone there, one marble caught. Three of them will finish, but that is a poor result for the O-Rangers. Pinkies in the gate right now. They splay wide as they come off of it, and with a full head of steam, they careen into several of those sticks. They lose two marbles in the process. That picks up four penalty seconds when combined with the sticks that were knocked down, and they go into sixth of seven. Here in run eight, it's the Raspberry Racers. Everybody hugging that inside line. Oh, they've knocked both down for one of the earlier ones, two in the bottom jump. That steeplechase has not gone well at all, and they are nearly in last place. The Rojo Rollers. Rojos, Uno, Dos, Trace, and Quattro. They start to go side by side coming off of there. They glance off of one of those sticks. Now they've knocked two down in a row, but otherwise decently clean. They had no DNFs, and 17.09 is good enough for first place. Nine runs in, and the Rojo Rollers sit atop the standings, one ahead of Crazy Cat Size, and the Gliding Glaciers are in third. Mellow Yellow just off the podium. Our host, the Bumblebees, down in sixth. 
underneath the cauldron, which is relatively calm inside of the stadium, unlike out here, where it is gusty. Our silver medalists from the Honeycomb Team Pursuit, the Savage Speeders. That was a quick descent. They do lose two marbles, however, and knock down two of the jumps. And that puts them way back in sixth. Shining Swarm come through now. Two of their back marbles side by side. They switch positions midway down. Oh, and it's disaster on the lower jumps. Six penalty seconds, and the Shining Swarm are dead last. The Snowballs, who need a good result here. They were disqualified in the Honeycomb Team Pursuit because not only did they lose two marbles, but those two marbles did not even stay in their lanes. Trouble on the top jump. It got a little better farther down, but too many dislodged. There you can see some of them weren't knocked down entirely. It was just one end that was broken off. Well, either way, the penalties come the same, and they are barely hanging on to a top 10 result. Team Galactic, very quick over the first two jumps. A bit chaotic as a result. They are not able to clear them down below. We're not getting an updated wind graphic or anything right now. You can just see from how much the marbles are straining that sometimes that headwind is knocking them down and the jumps become that much more difficult. Getting down toward the bottom of the order, right now it's Team Momo. A double stick dislodge on two separate jumps and a bit of trouble in between. Five penalty seconds puts them in 10th. So are we seeing strategies develop over the course of this? Are marbles slowly learning what to do and what not to do? Well, unless the conditions are getting markedly worse, I think based on the results, the answer so far is no. Look at the speed, however, that Team Plasma are carrying. And it looks like they're going all out on this one. Three penalty seconds, but it does put them in first place, 16.62. Look at those times. Sub seven seconds on both, and even with the difficulty clearing those jumps, they are provisionally first. The Thunderbolts, the final marble team to go. Oh, and they have two marbles that get caught on the final jump. One of them gets going again, but wow. 11th place for the Thunderbolts. While in the meantime, how about Team Plasma? Our 2022 showdown winners continuing to impress, this time in the big leagues. That was a go for broke run by Team Plasma as they nearly went off of the track a couple of times. They got so high on the walls, but they knew it was going to come down to speed. Nobody else was able to do it very cleanly. So they just had to give it their all, and my goodness, it worked. And of course, coming right after I said that the later teams were maybe not learning so much about the right way to win this event. Well, thank you, Team Plasma, for proving me wrong, because you earned that gold medal. The Rojo Rollers get the silver, and Crazy Cat's Eyes get the bronze. That's two medals in two events for the Cats. Gliding Glaciers just off the podium. In front of Mellow Yellow, Midnight Wisp, Savage Speeders, and Team Galactic, our host, the Bumblebees, in ninth. The Snowballs were not last in this one, but they still have a few spots to climb. That dubious distinction goes to Shining Swarm, and surprisingly, just in front of them, the O-Rangers. That's good enough to pick up a point. And here is the winning run. Everybody clear over the first one. They do knock down one stick on the second. Look at the speed they carry through that left-hander. Trouble down below, but it is enough. Taking a look at the team standings, Crazy Cat's Eyes still holds first place, but Plasma jumps up seven, Rojo Rollers up six. That's a very tight battle developing for third spot, while Plasma has the slimmest of breathing margins over third place. While bumblebees may have wings and don't necessarily need to jump all that much, the rest of our competitors, including the bumblebees as hosts, need to compete in event number three, the five meter hurdles, if they hope to claim a Marble League championship at the end of this tournament. Hey everybody, 
I'm Greg Woods. Here is the track. By the way, this video is made possible by Surfshark VPN. Stick around throughout this video to learn more about this leading VPN provider. All right, this one, five meters, an individual event. You see all of the hurdles that come at them. You must master every single one if you hope to cross the line as the winner and fall into that catch sand triumphant. Those sweepers are going to be having a lot to do over the course of today. Two teams have claimed gold. Snowy, Yellow, Swax, and Rapidly. In the lineup for this first run, Snowy is out in front. Swax holding second place there in lane number three, but loses it out to the Savage Speeders. The top two will advance. Snowy comes through. The captain of the Snowballs, 8455. Rojo Dos, Yellow Eye, Sheet, and Quasar. Two reserves in this one. And Yellow Eye chosen, listening to the fans, the Crazy Cat's Eyes did, because they were worried that Yellow Eye being dropped from Marvel 1 was unjust. And oh, they just barely make it through in this one. I guess they're trying to prove themselves. And just 16 thousandths of a second from Sheet of the Gliding Glaciers. Pink Panther, Ruzzy, Wespy, and Momo Momo. Momo Momo is trying to catch up on this bottom lane, has the lead now, and gets it. Ruzzy comes through in second place over Pinky Panther and Wespy. Clementon, Shock, Firo, captain of our gold medal winning team Plasma from last event in the steeplechase, and Glimmer from the Shining Swarm. And all the way wire to wire, Shining Swarm will take the win with Glimmer. Clementon comes through a little over a tenth of a second behind. And so after four heats, there you see, ninth through sixteenth based on time. Also want to give a shout out to one of our patrons who says, happy 12th birthday, O Rangers fan, Logan Varnell. Yellow Eye, Momo Momo, Snowy, Clementon down on the bottom. Yellow Eye coming in second place here and will hold that spot, finishing behind the O Rangers. Eight point one six three. Ruzzy. Rapidly, Glimmer, and Sheet. Glimmer was fast out of the gate, but had trouble on the first hurdle and has fallen all the way back to last. Top lane, Ruzzy is gonna take it. And Savage Speeders, look at him careening side to side, rapidly bounding off of the edges of the lane. That was not enough to stop that Marvel from advancing to the final from semi-final B, so here. 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. This one not a top 10 for the Bumblebees. Snowballs are going to be disappointed just to miss out on the final. But four marbles have a chance to capture gold. Will it be the Raspberry Racers? They are yet to stand on the podium. It's rapidly Clementon, Yellow Eye, and Ruzzy. Out of the gate they come, rapidly. To the lead on the first. Clementon in second place. Ruzzy now on the bottom lane, comes through and makes it. What a come from behind win for gold. Mastering the last hurdle. My goodness. 28 thousandths of a second. Ruzzy, the reserve, the only reserve in the finale. Wow, and Yellow Eye unable. To stand on the podium, you have to be questioning the coach's decision there. If you just feel bad for Yellow Eye, I don't know. But that's not the first time that we have heard controversy coming from the coaching decisions in Crazy Cat's Eyes. I'm sure it won't be the last either. Ruzzy with the gold, rapidly the silver, and Clementon with the bronze. Savage Speeders got silver back in the first event, the Honeycomb Team Pursuit. They now join the Crazy Cat's Eyes as the only team to medal twice 
Appropriately, they jump up behind the Cats, three points behind into second place in the overall standings. A healthy jump for Raspberry Racers, up nine into third. Plasma drops, as do Rojo Rollers. The Rangers up five. Our hosts, the Bumblebees, fall three down to 11th. And it's the Thunderbolts at the tail of the field with a lot of work to do. Our front runners can feel safe at the top of the standings, and you can feel safe for a different reason. You can use Surfshark VPN when browsing on the internet. With Surfshark VPN, you can unlock web pages that are blocked in your region or unlock your favorite series that may not be available otherwise. You can also add an element of safety to your browsing. The landscape of the internet changes all the time. So you need somebody in your corner to roll with those punches, to roll with those waves, and help you stay as safe and as secure as possible when you are online. And Surfshark VPN does just that. You can learn more on the links in our description to this video below, but they are a proud sponsor of Yella's Marble Runs and the Marble League. Check out Surfshark VPN. Nearing the quarter mark in the 2023 Marble League. And in the first three events, the host Bumblebees have been pretty decent overall, but the fans are yearning for more. Queen of Queens wiggling her wings nervously in the stands, wondering, will they see a medal? Will that medal perhaps be as golden as honey? We'll have to see. The Bumblebees currently sit 11th in the standings out of 16 teams. Crazy Cat's Eyes lead the way, just barely over the Savage Speeders. Raspberry Racers jump nine spots to third after a victory by Ruzzy in the five-meter hurdles. This event, however, completely different. It is a full team event, and you are going head-to-head -head with three other teams. The goal? collectively push those red blocks as far as you can down this track. You have to keep them in your track, however, like we've seen in previous iterations of this event. You don't want to get too out of control and risk a disqualification if one of your marbles or one of the blocks ends up elsewhere. The score you see are the collective distances, and hey, shout out to our Love Seat members. Thank you for supporting Yella's Marble Runs. They're sitting just down in front of me. Hey, everybody, I'm Greg Woods. The Bumblebees fans getting the wave going around the stadium. The beautiful cauldron is lit up top, and we are ready for Heat 1, Push 1. The Bumblebees as hosts are up there in lane one, and they are going to get the opening. Wait a minute. Is that a record? Oh my gosh, let's wait for the standings. It is! It's a Marble League record. 101-15, the Bumblebees on the first push. The fans are thrilled with that. What do they do here? Uh, not quite as good, but still decent. And by the way, you can see at the back there, Team Plasma still trying to figure out the best strategy. Coach Ion has said this team has a lot of work to do. They are newcomers and it has been showing so far in these games. Third iteration. And thus far, it's been Bumblebees leading every single one. And you can see the little red record marker down there. Appropriately held in place by a small little bee. But that is a wonderful result. Over 100. And what do they do here in the final run? Of course, each team has a chance at every one of the lanes in this format. And they once again come out on top. Well, the winners of this heat, not in doubt at all. You take the best two pushes and add those together. So two over 100. 185, the next best. We'll see if that 200 mark collectively is going to be difficult to beat, but the Bumblebees are thrilled with that. Shining Swarm, Raspberry Racers, Crazy Cat's Eyes and Mellow Yellow coming down now. And look at Shining Swarm up top. They get close to that 100 mark and close to that new record, but come just short of the ladder. Change lanes and come back down now. Crazy Cat's Eyes, our winners back in Honeycomb Team Pursuit and a bronze medal in the steeplechase. Once again, Shining Swarm edges ahead. 
Raspberry Racers, by the way, I mentioned their gold medal last event in the five meter hurdles. Plasma, you know, I, I say that they have not done terribly well overall. I mean, they did win the steeplechase, so <laughs> apologies for that. And uh, oh boy, this push was very uncharacteristic. What is going on with Crazy Cat's Eyes here? Uh, Phoenix beside me says White Eye is very unhappy from the coaching stand. Frustrated at what this team is able to do. And, and look at this once again, Crazy Cat's Eyes. The championship leaders are way back. Mellow Yellow finally does get by Shining Swarm. Let's take a look. The Swarm teams dominate today. Championship leaders are falling down the order. And they are dead last right now. Team Galactic, Snowballs, Thunderbolts, and Rojo Rollers. Nice one, Team Galactic. They get past 90 up top. Everybody else shy of 85. Change lanes and down we come once again. You know, part of the difficulty of an event like this is when you have these four heats and you know that two of them are going to have to count, how do you spread out your energy over the course of these? Do you just go for broke on one of them and hope that you have more in the tank? Do you try to average them out? I think as we get farther along in this event, you will see more teams opting for desperation as they try to beat that 200 plus total that was put up in the very first runs. Thunderbolts get a bit of separation with their first marble there. You don't really want to see that in block pushing. As we always do, we talk about the strategy that is involved in getting a solid, consistent effort directed forward. And a lot of times you will see that fourth marble straggle and end up being like the hammer to hit them and drive them forward. Bumblebees still on top, Shining Swarm are next up. Mellow Yellow back there, 187. Then it gets fairly close, 187. Down through 178, 174. Really close on who will end up in those upper positions. Still a lot of points to be gained, even if you don't get medals. New Heat. And a nice battle there between Savage Speeders and Midnight Wisps on the bottom two lanes. Savage Speeders do get the win head to head, but they're gonna need a Marble League record push to claim the top spot at this point. Oh, the Wisps give it a go. They get near 100. And they're threatening to spoil the bee party. What kind of party do bees have, I wonder? Down they come once more. Can the Wisps put it together? No, not this time. They are last, in fact. Nice run down in lane three by the Pinkies, our defending Marble League champions, 97-6-0. That's a nice total to carry forward, and they have one more chance to better it. Speeders are quick out of the gate. They stay together. What can that hammer marble do? Oh, it gets them briefly past the Wisps, but their hammer moves it forward. Is that a new record? We're gonna have to wait for the official measuring. Can't really tell from this angle. And it is! 101-3-0. The bees are anxious right now as the totals are being added up. Bumblebees had great consistency across their two runs. This is a record, but was that second run good enough? When it's this close, they take a little extra time. No, the bumblebees are still ahead. Bumblebees have won the gold. It comes down to the final run of the entire day. Congratulations to the top three of this event, the Savage Speeders, the Midnight Wisps, and the Bumblebees. And my goodness, after all of this, just a couple of centimeters is the difference, not even that. Between gold and silver and victory is sweet for the Bumblebees. The hosts are your champions in block pushing. 
this stadium is going berserk right now. The Bumblebees were not expecting this, nor were Crazy Cat's Eyes expecting a zero. Savage Speeders, they move up to the top spot. Three medals out of four events for the new championship leaders. Unbelievable as well. Look at fourth spot. Bumblebees jump up seven. And a quick patron shout out before we go. Maddie, you're beautiful, amazing, and we love you. You're awesome. Go Bolts from Greg. And that's a different Greg, by the way. There are some happy teams and some that are walking away from this one bruised and a bit shocked. I wonder, what momentum will the Bumblebees carry forward after this? Last time out, we saw a thrilling finale in block pushing. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you haven't seen it, click in the upper right corner of the screen to watch, because we're probably going to show you the standings here in just a minute. So <laughs> you may want to watch that before you check in with this one. This one in particular, oh, there it is. This one in particular is a five meter sprint. And you see how things have shuffled around after block pushing. Seven spots gained for our winners, the Bumblebees. Midnight Wisps up four. They nearly got the top spot. Savage Speeders, they made the crucial jump above Crazy Cat's Eyes to take the overall championship lead. Several teams, however, are sliding down the order, and this is still early enough in these games that you want to make sure you can begin to turn the tide. If you wait too much longer, you're going to run out of time. Here we see the example of the five-meter sprint. Pretty straightforward on this one, not a heck of a lot to say. Stay off the walls, stay in your lane, and try to advance. I believe top two will be moving on from each of these heats as the Queen of Queens watches on. By the way, hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. A quick Patreon shout out. Go Pack Go by Gnarled Cypress. A tree after this own Woods' heart. All right. Momo, Iceberg, Bumble, and Mandarin will get us going, and it's Mandarin quick out of the gate. Bumble holding in second place. Down across the line, those top two will advance. Pretty straightforward race for those couple. 41 thousandths, Mandarin finished ahead of Bumble. It may look like a couple of lengths, but with the speed that they gather by the time they get to the bottom, those margins are slim. There's Pinky Toe Rojo Trace down on the bottom. This is going to be a win for Team Plasma. Firo, the captain in a three-captain lineup, continues marching forward. You know, I mentioned that comment in the last video about Team Plasma not doing very well. That was their coach talking about that particular event, not necessarily overall. This is a very close heat between all of these marbles. Green Eye maybe inches ahead, but loses out across the line. And the Snowball's captain will claim it by seven thousandths of a second. Crazy Cat's Eyes, not thrilled with that one, but they advance rapidly. Razzy, Sterling. Watch Mellow Yellow down in the bottom. Top two lanes. And wow, Yellow, the marble with three golds in the five meter sprint, knocked out in the group stage by the Raspberry Racers and the Savage Speeders. That's a bit of a surprise. And look at that Astron losing out the Iceberg by a thousandth of a second. Even if you don't advance, you still have to perform well. And that's the difference between one incredibly crucial point this could come down to later in the season. All right, here we go in the semifinals. Razzy, Mandarin, Pinky Toe, and Snowy. Snowy with the early lead down on the bottom. Mandarin holding second place, but doesn't stay there. The Raspberry Racers will move on by a hundredth of a second. Bumble, Firo, Green Eye, and Rapidly in semifinal B. Bumble, Rapidly. They hold it, wire to wire. The Bumblebees are into the final. Momentum on the side of our hosts. How often do we say that in the Marble League? Green Eye finishes just out of the top four. Nice run there over Mandarin, Pinky Toe. A lot of captains down there in the bottom of the order, including dead last with Momo. 
or the eponymous team Momo. The final, Snowy, Rapidly, Razzy, and Bumble. Snowy with an early lead. Here comes Bumble on the bottom lane. Snowy holding it. Snowy will get the gold. Bumble gets silver. But that gold is the first ever in an individual event for the Snowballs. Wow. They knocked out the host. They stand on the top step of the podium. Rapidly another medal. And that is a performance that puts Rapidly past the 200 point mark all time. What an absolute legend. The Marble League is full of them. Thing is, some of those marbles are currently writing their legends as they go along. That is what always makes this so interesting to watch. History made for snowballs and the bumblebees get two straight medals. Savage Speeders continue doing very well. Four medals in the first five events, trying to claim their third Marble League Championship. And the bumblebees move up into second place by a single point. Snowballs jump six and they are right on the heels of the defending champions down there in eighth and ninth. Still wide open is the Marble League, and we are just finding our footing as we get ready to head into the tug of war. We hope that you will stay with us. The host Bumblebees now have two medals in the last two events. And can they keep that momentum going as we come to event six, the tug of war? remains to be seen, but we're glad that you're here with us. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This event may remind you of jousting from the 2021 Marble League, but this time the marbles will meet head-to-head, -head, literally, in a strength-related event. They come down together and push the block to the opponent's side to win the heat, and whoever pushes it onto the other side wins. There you see who is currently winning the Savage Speeders' four medals in five events. What a run, but the Bumblebees now sit in second place. They're beginning to flex their wings as the crazy cat's eyes drop. Midnight Wisps drop as well. You see the block on your screen there. Snowball's up six midway down the order. And this event, I'm told by a little bee friend that uh, this was inspired by the Queen of Queens herself as an homage of sorts to the long-standing rivalry between the bumblebees and the hornets that used to exist and the ultimate message that working together, finding commonality, ends up building something stronger than ever before. And that is a nice ode to those two teams that are now joined as one. You see them all in the stands as the wave goes around, ready for heat one after we saw that example. You'll notice a black dot, by the way, on the center of the block makes it a little easier from this view right here to see who pushed it on one side versus the other. You also see the green and the red. So bumblebees were able to move it ever so slightly onto the other side. They get the head-to-head -head win. Snowballs, winners of the last event versus Midnight Wisps. Down they come. It looks like the Wisps ah, easily have moved that block over. First time we've seen an event like this, as we always do, we analyze the strategy coming down to it. The captains up front, the impact of the block. And boy, if you time it just right, it ends up being that close. Wow, two millimeters is all to the side. That is amazingly centered <laughs> on that line. Plasma and O-Rangers coming down now. And this is one of the things that I wondered, is it better to get to the block first and rotate it ever so slightly so that the other team, when they hit, they don't get the force applied in the right direction and end up spearing off into the sand? The Rangers opted for that strategy. I think it worked decently well. Shining Swarm and Savage Speeders. Speeders held on with rapidly for the bronze in the last event. 
That's two bronzes in a row. Do they advance here? And I think they might have. They do. That block pinballed back and forth a few times. And Savage Speeders, they get the head-to-head -head win. Raspberry Racers and Mellow Yellow. The racers are winner in the five meter hurdles back in event number three. That is very close, really hard to tell. Oh, and I think it's that last little nudge there. Was that Rozzy that did it? That is the official by a millimeter. Wow, the edge to the Raspberry Racers. That is how close this event can be. That adds a different element, by the way, in when do your marbles impact the block? Does everybody try to go at once? Do you kind of treat it like block pushing where you stagger the impacts? Gliding Glaciers and Rojo Rollers. Block nearly goes off the edge there, but Rojo Rollers will get the win. You can see how helpless the Gliding Glaciers were those last three marbles when they impacted and were sent backwards. Suddenly my head feels a little lighter, by the way. Not really sure why. After eight heats, we see ninth through 16th. Team Plasma down there at the bottom. The yellow just missed moving on. They still get some points, however, as the top eight will continue to go head to head. Hey, have you heard? We launched new merchandise for this season. Make sure to check out our online merch shop either at the top right corner of your screen or down in the video's description. We have designs for all of your favorite teams as well as Marble League 2023 season shirts and foam cases. As the sand has been tended and everything is nice and crisp looking, we get ready to inch our way forward toward the medals. Who will claim it? In this first quarter final, we have to overcome either the Bumblebees or the Midnight Wisps. The crowd willing the Bumblebees on. They keep one marble right there on the edge. Stinger heads off in the other direction, maybe getting some practice in for balancing. And it will be the Bumblebees. Second quarterfinal, Crazy Cat Size versus the O-Rangers. Everybody just shot backward on that one. The block barely moved. And in this battle of Marbula One rivals, it pinballs back and forth, and the last marble to hit it the one who ends up winning, it's Crazy Cat's Eyes. Quarterfinal C, Savage Speeders and Raspberry Racers. That was a clear victory by the Raspberry Racers. They put that together nicely. Look at them all coming in here, slightly staggered. So you see that they almost went too wide on the block impact so that whichever way it pivoted, they could try to make sure to get it back centered. Very clever move. Pinkies and Rojo Rollers. They come down now and the Pinkies have rotated that block and shoved it well onto the other side. The Pinkies will be moving on. They not only got to the block sooner, but they kept it moving. Young and old alike amongst the Pinkies, pretty happy with that one. Or Rangers, a little bit sad just to miss out on the top four. Bumblebees are moving on, however. Savage Speeders are championship leaders. They are not. Ready for semifinal A. This whole place is willing them on. The Bumblebees versus the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Will the Cats play spoiler? No, they won't. if the JMA actually intended some of these marbles just to keep rolling down the other end, but uh, I suppose it doesn't do any harm. But uh, it works. Raspberry Racers and the Pinkies. Who else goes to the final? 
Oh, I think the Pinkies may have done it. Yes, they did. Looking for their first gold medal of these games. The Pinkies will move on. Excellent view from up here in the commentary box with the love seats in front of us as we ready for the third place match. Who wins the bronze, Crazy Cat's Eyes or Raspberry Racers? Oh, and that block is very rotated. And it's just over the line. Crazy Cat's Eyes have done it. Crazy Cat's Eyes get the bronze. But this is what this stadium came to watch. Could the Bumblebees continue their form? Will the Pinkies knock them off and win their first medal of the games? In the middle, this is very close. Zero. They have tied. We're going to roll again. Switch sides. Who gets the gold? Oh, the block is dislodged. And it is the Bumblebees. They have to look at where the block was at the last moment where it falls over. And the Bumblebees have done it. Two golds in three events. Congratulations to the medalists, Crazy Cats, the Pinkies, and the Bumblebees. I think the Bumblebees are kind of getting used to this. The hosts winning two golds in three events, and in the middle of that, they won a silver as well. So three for three after a rather slow start. Crazy Cat's Eyes needed that bronze and wow, the Pinkies are ecstatic getting their first podium of the 2023 Marble League and with it a nice points haul that should vault them farther up the order. The Bumblebees leading the standings now. This is the first time in Marble League history that a host leads the overall standings. In 2018, Snowball's very close, but they weren't quite up there. And wow, by a single point, the Bumblebees have left the Savage Speeders. Pinkies are up two. They are now just outside of the top five. All of these teams are gonna be hungry for more we hope that you are too. We'll see you in the next event. If the ups and downs of the first six events in the 2023 Marble League have left you spinning, well, my heart goes out to you because it's time for the Funnels, a fan favorite event that tests endurance and strategy all the way down from dizzying heights and in this case, two heats of that. There will be eight athlete marbles apiece. Top four will advance. The goal is to stay in those green funnels as long as possible and obviously don't fall off. And oh yeah, if you shove anybody off, that is frowned upon as well. The Bumblebees are building a nice run at the championship. They are in fine form of late and a one point lead they have above the Savage Speeders. Speeders are 10 above the crazy cat's eyes, then it's a bit of a gap back to everybody else. Some teams are surging, others are floundering. And as we come to event 6 of 16, it begins to reach this pivotal moment. Are you going to put things together and actually try to get up there in the final few rounds? Maybe to chase a championship, maybe to chase a podium? Or is your form at the front looking good? Do all signs point to P1? Here you see the lineup, just one captain, two reserves in those eight marbles. The top four, remember, will advance and the first crucial moment is right there, that drop into the chute, because that momentary hang up can give you an extra few seconds before you fall into the melee. Sheet for the gliding glaciers drops through, 
first into the second funnel. You do not want to do that. You want to stay out as long as possible. Rezzy is down there as we take a look up top. Cyan Eye goes through. Now we've got three up there. Mellow Yellow battling with the Thunderbolts, and it will be Shock who has the provisional lead through the first funnel. Tries to go as wide as possible into the second. Nobody has fallen down into the three yet. And now we get two. Cyanai is dropping down the order. Had been one of the final few to go into funnel number two and is now one of the first to drop down into funnel three. Thunderbolts are battling up there and what a move this is for Sheet from the Gliding Glaciers. Going from last to first. That is mighty impressive. Circling, circling those four up top now. Thunderbolts drop through first. Gliding Glaciers will hold on to the lead. Now you would think that Glaciers kind of have it in their being to be slow. But this is deceptively not a slowness event. This is one of strategy and endurance. You have to keep it going. If anything, you must keep your speed up to avoid tipping through that event horizon and dropping down. We nearly have finishers down below. Remember, the first four that fall through will not advance. Cyan Eye is last. I know that was a controversial choice. White Eye just smashed his tactical board, apparently. And we are hearing some jeers from the crazy cat's eye stands. They are not happy. Yellum, Honey, and Wespy are the other four that will not advance. So the order in these four, not necessarily that important, all will move on. So Pulsar from Team Galactic comes through, then Rezzy for Raspberry Racers, Shock from the Thunderbolts, and what a turnaround for Sheet from the Gliding Glaciers. A 28 second difference from first to eighth. And yeah, that frustration from the Crazy Cat's Eyes mounting. We've heard it in several events now. But they are maybe doing some second guessing of White Eye's decisions. That hurt them in this one if Cyan Eye truly was not the right choice, and I let the results speak for themselves in that one, and you decide. Now, I can't really see from where I stand, but did this Marble League banner move? Well, maybe it did. All right, anyway, let's head over to heat number two. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I introduced myself. Hey, everybody, I'm Greg Woods. The funnels beckon for the second heat. Eight more marbles will represent their teams at the top of this massive mountain of scaffolding and green funnels. In this one, just one captain and one reserve. Who will capture the final four transfer spots to make it to the finale? Difficulty there already. Was that Ghosto from Team Plasma that dropped through very early? Ooh, oh, Rangers, they lipped out on that top funnel, but they managed to keep going. In fact, they're down to the final two. Oh, Rangers and Savage Speeders, is that familiar? And oh, Rangers, salvage it. Kino in the captain keeps it wide and somehow manages to stay out of that drop. Dangerously close to the middle this time, though. The Pinkies, Pinky Rosa, Snowfall, also down there. One of the first few down into that third funnel. Oh, Rangers, Kinoen holding on. Team Plasma. They lip out. Ghosto manages to keep momentum going and gets on the other side of that wall of marbles. That's one way to flip the fortunes, and we see it in Kinoen. The Oh, Rangers are now in a precarious situation. Kino and went from leading this race, and all of a sudden is now swinging ever closer to that drop. Swifty goes through, dead last for the Savage Speeders. Sterling from the Shining Swarm. Now, more marbles are dropping in. Have the Rangers righted the ship? They have. Kino and doing an incredible job. Everybody circling in the final funnel. The bottom four will not move on. Team Plasma, Ghosto comes in last. After winning gold in the steeplechase, their performances have gone downhill and the finishers falling quickly now. I think they realize they don't need to expend extra energy. Our four transfers will be Mo, Pinky Rosa, Rojo Dos, and Sterling. Kinoen does not make it. Snowfall, Swifty, and Ghosto are the other three in the bottom four, but wow, Kinoen had the race in hand then didn't, then did, and now comes just short. 
A little bee tells me that some of those positions may be in danger. Are they talking about Cyan Eye? Are they talking about coach or manager? Who knows? Crazy Cat Size in the meantime, zero points. Coach and manager are very disappointed. And oh my goodness, the giant banner has come down. Thankfully, nobody underneath. It's a thundering motion and, and sound and vibration as these marbles come down through this course. And it has actually shaken this sign loose. So we're going to take a short break while they fix it. Our biggest fans have already gotten their season tickets of Marble League 2023. Have you? If you haven't, you can press the Join button here on YouTube to get your VIP ticket. With every new monthly pledge, you will get a new ticket for Marbula One, Marble League Sand Rally, and so on. Check out the top right corner of the screen and the video's description below. All right, it seems all is well again as the sign is heading back up to where it should be. I wondered if it had dropped ever so slightly from a couple of angles ago. And it just goes to show the power and, and the speed that these marbles take as they come down through here. It shakes everything. All right, this is the final. Stay in the funnel the longest, and you have captured Marble League Gold. And it's not going well for Rojo Dos, who drops through first. Who's got that wide angle up top? Pinky Rosa is looking pretty good. Oh, this is a very good view from that top. Oh, as I say that, Pinky Rosa gets shouldered in and drops through. Sterling from the Shining Swarm inherits the lead. And then careens into a wall of marbles down below. Rezzy from Raspberry Racers has fallen into last position and immediately gets thwacked by Shock, who slingshots down through. Gliding Glaciers, Sheet, whose incredible performance in that first heat he is coming a bit undone here. Meanwhile, up top, it is Mo from Team Momo who has inherited first. Rezzy was doing a great job and had come up to second place there. Here comes Sheet for the Gliding Glaciers, dropping down. Two funnels to go for some of these marbles. Pinky Rosa is also down there, along with Sterling. Up top, look at how slow they are getting. There come two, three, four marbles, and Rezzy has the lead for Raspberry Racers. They won the five meter hurdles in event three. Now is where it begins to get a little dicey and Rezzy has dropped through and lost the lead. You start shouldering marbles side to side and is Sheet going to retake the lead? Yes, indeed. The gliding glaciers. This has been a tremendous performance for Sheet but will it lead to a medal? Shock comes through in dead last. Who will be next to drop through? So many marbles are precariously perched. Pulsar comes down. Next comes Rojo Dos. Mo drops through. Rezzy can't get it just off the podium. Sheet for the gliding glaciers will get the bronze. And it comes down to Sterling. Sheet got the first individual medal in that marble's career. But Sterling gets the top spot and wins gold in the funnel endurance. Pinky Rosa with the silver. Look at how much those times improved in the heats to the final. 210. Sterling made it work and Sheet from the Gliding Glaciers. A lot of eyes on that one, but. A quiet race for Pinky Rosa, collecting the silver just three seconds back of the eventual winner. I think he's got silver in tug of war one event ago. Well, they're feeling pretty good. It's not just the bumblebees who are trending well lately. Congratulations to the medalists, the gliding glaciers, the pinkies, and the shining silver. The sounds of singing filling the stadium, and it comes from the fans of the Shining Swarm. And fortunes have flipped, Savage Speeders have passed the hosts and have now gone back to the lead. Pinkies are defending champion, they come up into third spot, Shining Swarm up six with that gold, 
now one point off of the O'Rangers in seventh. So many chances, though, for moving up and down the order. Where will your favorite team settle when we get to the end of all of this? The next event coming will be balancing, and that one has a whole different complexion to what we just witnessed, and I hope you will not want to miss it. Two different forms of endurance test our competitors from last event to this one as we move from funnel endurance to balancing. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods, this event all about teamwork and making sure that you can follow that line and not fall off into the sand. Savage Speeders back on top in the overall standings. Bumblebees are hosts down to second by just two points with a 10-point margin back to third place Pinkies who are on the rise as our Shining Swarm Sterling, our victor in Funnel Endurance, got the gold medal in front of the Pinkies and Gliding Glaciers. This track gives a maximum of 120 points per marble athlete. But remember, if you reach that catch basin just like that one did, you get an extra 10 points. How many will collect that whopping 130? The refs perched along the side of the track, watching scrupulously as they go. It will be our hosts, the Bumblebees, to tiptoe along this track. I guess they're used to tiptoeing through tulips, but that is to pollinate rather than balance. Ah, bumblebees did not work. Remember Stinger in the tug of war? Gave that extra run along this narrow trackway? I don't think it paid off. Where did they go wrong here? Look at them, already splayed three wide. And they just could not keep it together. Marbles checking over their shoulders to see what the others are doing. That's not a great way to move on. Crazy Cat's Eyes keep it together for a lot longer. They get two marbles past 90 for a 303 for our bronze medalists back in the aforementioned tug of war. That was their second bronze medal, by the way, after steeplechase. And of course, they won team pursuit to start everything. Gliding Glaciers come down now. And they make one all the way to the end. There's that blue 130, but it's a 296, only good enough for second place because they lost marbles very early on. You can see one to either side. Third marble held on for quite some distance, made it past 90. Mellow Yellow, they've seen how it's done. They've got three marbles on the track. One makes it to the end. One of them almost made it. And I think they had a marble past 100. Ah, oh, 97 actually. Of course, the score is where the marbles fall off, not where they touch down. 385 is good enough for first place, however, a quarter of the way through this event. Midnight Wisps, the bronze medal in the very first event of these games. Very slow and tedious, that fourth marble, but that is what it takes sometimes to make it to that catch basin, and a 311 puts them into provisional silver medal. Midnight Wisps have tasted that medal before back in block pushing when they got silver as the O'Rangers come out now. They've lost three early, four near the 100 mark. 99 just short and a fifth place. That is second to last for the O'Rangers. You can see them slightly deviating off of center as they drop down that ramp and they could not keep it together. It's one thing to stay bunched. It's another to start running into each other and you can send your teammates off of the track. Bumblebees, unfortunately, dead last so far by a wide margin. This event eight of a scheduled 16. This run, seven of 16, so we're almost near halfway and the Pinkies are not gonna get there. There will be no third medal in a row for these athletes. Two silvers in tug of war and then funnel endurance in consecutive events. And that one all fell off for them. Raspberry Racers. They come down the block. Two marbles staying on. Will they both make it? No! It looks like Razzie just went wide of the catch basin. They lost 10 points as a result. 
But look at that 120 total in addition to the 130, but those early losses still mean they run second place. Not good enough for first. Raspberry Racers are happy to be in medal contention, however. But oh, that was close. Rojo Rollers, one medal in these games early on. Can they put something together here? That's a very similar run to what we just saw. One in the catch basin, one very close to 117. And their run moves them up into second place. Raspberry Racers drop to provisional third. That lead marble got away maybe too early. You could see separation. As a result, athlete losing its way. The Savage Speeders, our championship leader right now. Oh, they bunch up very early. And speed, not a key in this precision event. Savage Speeders learned that the hard way with two marbles failing to break 40. And the Speeders now in the bottom of the order in eighth of 10 so far. Shining Swarm gold medalists from one event ago. They need this marble to make it and it does but those early losses will hurt. Ninth position. Wow, one marble not even hitting 25. Even with that 130, you can do everything right, but this is a team event, and you can see how precarious that was. Woohoo! Getting to the edge right before that catch basin, but managing to hold on. The Bumblebees not exactly buzzing so far. They are 11th of 11 who have run. 212, now just four behind the Pinkies. Not that that matters too much. They're still collecting points as of yet, but they could finish in dead last if things continue. Mellow Yellow holding on to that top spot. That was a tremendous run. For a team that would love to add to their medal total in their career because, well, they haven't added anything in these games. Snowballs come on down now. That point total a little frigid. Just ninth. Anytime you get that initial view looking straight down the way here and you can see all four marbles <laughs> side by side, not ideal. Team Galactic are up now with just a few events to go. We start locking in medalists pretty soon. One marble made it down to 114, but an 18 rolls everything back and puts them in 10th. Three runs to go. It starts with Team Momo. Down they come, two holding on. Oh, they bump into each other, and that last marble slowed up, got tripped from behind, and only made it to 106. You can see the corrective action trying to get back toward the middle, but too much of the elbows out. And now our P1 runner guaranteed a medal. What can Team Plasma do? Oh, no. Oh, that's, that's paltry. Dead last by quite some distance. That saves the Bumblebees. I know they don't have experience coming into this event, but Team Plasma going to be a little redder than usual after that one. Final run of the day does get us a finisher, but it's not enough for the Thunderbolts to capture a medal. They come in one spot short in fourth. The Marble League 21 champions in the meantime, they win gold. Oh, and look at that, it's just by one point. That is how precise things can be in balancing. For Mellow Yellow, is it experience, luck, training. That is their first medal midway through the season. That does give them a boost in the championship, and they are feeling good after that one. I know this whole area is full of a lot of yellow. It's not as mellow as that team, but they are happy to get a different shade up on the podium, and that's gold. Rojo Rollers get the silver, and Raspberry Racers get the bronze. I spy two teams from the old fruit circuit. Hmm. Good podium, everybody. And Mellow Yellow happy 
to be standing up there once again. So our standings at the midway point. Savage Speeders still hold on to the top spot, but Raspberry Racers have jumped up into P2 in front of the Bumblebees. Crazy Cat's Eyes are lurking back there in fourth. Mel Yellow up six spots to eighth. Thunderbolts down there in last. Team Momo in front of them. Plasma have dropped two after that disastrous result. But still so much to play for as we get ready for event number nine, the triathlon. How will your team fare? Put your predictions in the comments below. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our today's event. If you would have told me that we are past the halfway point in the Marble League and the host team is still in the top three with a chance to win the championship, I'd say you are pollen my leg. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This is the triathlon. And how better? to make it attuned to the hosts than to model the first sector of this triathlon after their home Marble One track. There you see the bumblebees and hear the bumblebees. <clears throat> Hopefully you could hear me over all of the buzzing because uh, this super hive is buzzing all over, not just in the commentary box, excuse me. The bumblebees sit just seven points back of the savage speeders who have retaken the top spot, but this discipline will test the marbles in multiple ways. The Marbula One track that begins, the sand rally chute, and the water section. Of course, make it over the line first, and you win. This is a timed event. On to this sand portion, as always. Very important to stay off the walls and keep the momentum up heading into the water, and then it is a push against friction. The water holding you back, that resistance as you plunge down toward the line. This ends up being a trickier track than what it looks like. And of course, this upper section modeled after the bee dance, the waggle. There you see the fans of the Thunderbolts. One of their marbles will be in the very first heat. Overall, I'd say their mood is pretty good, despite, by my counting, they have not gotten a medal in these games yet. All playing for that trophy right there. First up, Stinger, Lightning, Rizzy, and Waspy. Stinger gets the lead. Waspy holding in second place. Through the waggle they come and onto the sand portion, and it's still fairly tight up front. Especially with those top two. Oh, did we have a marble get stuck back there? Lightning out of the race. I am sorry I mentioned it earlier. Oh, sorry about that, Thunderbolts. Coming down across the line, it'll be Midnight Wisps that get the win. But I believe the timed event, we'll have to see how they shake up to everybody else. Apparently the JMA is reviewing the incident with Rizzy. Just got to make sure of the cause. Let's see here. Nope, nope, just bad timing. Ah, nothing untoward there. No unsportsmanlike behavior. As we expect out of these marbles, they all play pretty fair together usually. And the spirit of true sportsmanship. Waspy and Stinger are both congratulating each other over a close battle as they come across the line. Orangin. Cosmo, Velocity, and Frost. Down they come here, and that was a nice opening move by Cosmo to get up into second place, and now into first. As they head onto the sand portion, do the O'Rangers take the lead here? Because we expect them to do pretty well for the sand portion. They're not able to, but now they splay three wide as they come through the water. Down into the inside, I think Savage Speeders get a draft, and they move by and take the win. That was a great strategic move by Velocity through the water. All these marbles know what to expect from each other. It's just a matter of getting the performance right and timing things. And boy, that move by Savage Speeders. Look at that, catching the draft, moving to the side just in the nick of time. But look at how close that battle was for second place. A hundredth between them, Orangin gets it over Frost, but how will the times compare to everybody else? Captain, the only captain in that group, Cosmo, comes last.
Yellow, Blue Eye, Pinky Winky, and Ecto out now. Yellow to the lead. Ecto holding second place, coming down through the B dance. Ah, but trouble into that corner, and Yellow falls back to third spot. Blue Eye just tried to go right down the middle there, takes the lead, and has a wide margin coming down into the water. Talk about getting the line right through the sand. Wow, that paid dividends. Ecto will hold on to second place. Yellow finishes dead last. Look at that gap that Blue Eye had diving into the water and keeping it right down the middle, not weaving back and forth and losing time, winning that one by over a second. Here's Cat's Eyes feeling a bit better after what was an uncharacteristic outburst from White Eye. White Eye did apologize after that, even to maintain that professional nature. Victory helps with that, but still. Snowstorm, Glimmer, Rojo Cinco, and Mimo are out there now. And whoa, doing that slingshot effect off of what is a parabolic curb, we are told at turn one. They are testing that ahead of Marble One, so next time you have to check that out. That gap up front is coming down. How close will this be coming into the water? Look at Team Momo riding that wall to the inside, but so wide. Which marble comes across? I think that was too close to call up front. Rojo Cinco was in the mix. After really slowing up there in that opening sector, you can see the contact between the trailing marbles. Excellent defense from Rojo Cinco, and eventually it pays off. Rojo Cinco second place, and Snowstorm gets first. Down there on the bottom, Snowstorm taking that very defensive line, guaranteeing that no marble is going to be getting any sort of a draft through the water. After four heats, there we see the bottom of the order from Frost down to Lightning. The hosts do move on. Lightning the only DNF in that one. I'll take partial responsibility for that one. <laughs> and the bumblebees are still buzzing. What is your favorite team? You can show everyone who you support by visiting our online merchandise shop at Spring. Pick your favorite shirts, mugs, or even the collector's edition of Marbula One Season 3 posters. Follow the links down in the description to learn more. The Rojo Rollers happy with the efforts of Rojo Cinco in those first heats. And here we are for semi-final A. Down we come and it is the Orangers leading out in front. Crazy Cat's Eyes in second place with Blue Eye who tries to go to the inside, but it's sealed off. There goes Rojo Rollers into second place, but they're side by side coming through the sand. Blue Eye nailed this portion before and will hold second place, but look at the momentum that the Rojo Rollers had as they came into the water. It's died out a bit, though, as they've broken the draft to Crazy Cat's Eyes, and the Cats will hold on. O'Rangers get the win with Orangin, who held that one nearly wire to wire. There was the failed overtake. Blue Eye had to go for it. But Orangin already off into the distance. The main battle in this one was for second place. Rojo Cinco will come just short and Wuspy back there in fourth. So this, of course, a timed event. So we'll have to see how those shake out with the results of semifinal B. Snowstorm, Ecto, Stinger, and Velocity. Down they come. Snowstorm leads them into turn one. Stinger in second place. But there's that under move that Blue Eye couldn't make stick. That one worked, however. Snowstorm trying to keep everybody behind. Stinger goes into second place. Savage Speeders lose all momentum. Here they come in the run for the line underwater. Snowstorm holds on for the win. And it will be the Bumblebees finishing second in this one. And look at Ecto. Wow, that was a nice dive bomb move there, but... 
Unfortunately, does not pay off. Finishing in fourth. A mighty move from Velocity around the outside. Good racing. Pity not to have Ecto in the final round after a move like that. But we look at times. We look at the top finishers. There you see fifth through eighth. The new additions. Velocity, Ecto, Rojo Cinco, and Waspy. And so, the Bumblebees have moved on. Stinger, Orangin, Snowstorm, and Blue Eye for the final. One of these marbles will not get a medal. Three of them will. Down they come. Stinger holds into first place. And listen to this place erupt. Beehive, everyone. The race is not over. Stinger holding off Snowstorm. Snowstorm right down the middle using the move that Blue Eye did to take the lead. Can Stinger make up that gap? Watch Blue Eye along the wall. Snowstorm leading them across the line for gold in the triathlon. Stinger gets the silver, and I think Orangen held on for the bronze. Here was the early lead from Stinger. Look at the spin rate on these marbles as they come around the corner. But this was definitive for Snowstorm. Right down the middle, staying off the walls, just like I said in the beginning. And that was very close between them. Orange and, and Blue Eye, just a tenth of a second was all. And so, Snowstorm and the Snowballs pick up a gold medal for their efforts. Snowballs second gold medal of these games, the first coming back in the five meter sprint, that courtesy of Snowy. And that will help them move up the order. That silver for the Bumblebees though, that's gonna do well for their hopes of getting back on top. We'll wait for the bean counters to do their thing. In the meantime, we'll celebrate on the podium. Congratulations to the top three of this event, the Arrangers, the Bumblebees, and the Snowballs. And now, the standings after event nine of 16, the Bumblebees have done it. By two points, they've gone back to the top of the standings. Savage Speeders move down to second place. Crazy Cat's Eyes up to third by just two points over Raspberry Racers. Look at how tight some of these point totals are. That is amazing to see Snowballs do move up four spots courtesy of that gold medal. But we still have so many events left. How on earth will this shake out? Or is a Bumblebee's championship meant to be? Hope you've dusted off or dried off after the triathlon because all of the team members will be participating, at least the main four, in the five meter relay run for event 10 here in the 2023 Marble League. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. This one comes at a time when the Bumblebees have leapt to the top of the standings. I guess standing on top of things is normal for Bumblebees. They lead the Savage Speeders over the crazy cat size and then the Raspberry Racers back in fourth. But look at the spread. Statistically, with so many events left to go, this is still a wide open competition. No team has won more than two gold medals so far in these games. In order to win your third or maybe your first, you have to do it like this. Handoffs between the teammates. All the way down this five meter shoot and into the sand. The wonderfully manicured sand, I might add. All games they have been. That is how you can claim victory in the five meter sprint. Something that the Savage Speeders know very well. In fact, they've won gold five out of the six times that this event has been run as a part of the main Marble League. The only time they lost, that was back in 2019, to the Green Ducks, who are not here.
right now. So, will it be the Savage Speeders coasting again, or will somebody be able to conjure an upset and try to dethrone them? The Bumblebees are feeling it so far. Stinger, silver in the triathlon, one event ago. They also got gold back in tug of war, silver in the five meter sprint, so at least going fast over five meters. They know how to do that. And they got gold back in block pushing too. They'll be in heat one. Mellow Yellow, Bumblebees, Team Plasma, and Crazy Cat's Eyes, down they come. Crazy Cat's Eyes out in the lead, but Team Plasma shoots up into first. Bumblebees hold second, and now take the lead across the line. That was a great anchor leg. And that is how much this event can swing from handoff to handoff. Each team member is going to be slightly different in how well they run this event. Where do you put your ringer? Where do you put the one that will make all the difference for you? Will it be in the anchor, or do you want to get off to an early start? I think we saw the early start with Team Plasma. Bumblebees brought it home. Heat 2, Gliding Glaciers, Thunderbolts, Pinkies, and O'Rangers. Gliding Glaciers and O'Rangers are the first two away. Gliding Glaciers have fallen to dead last though. Now they're picking it up back into third. O'Rangers on the bottom lane will come across in front of the Thunderbolts to pick up the win in this heat. And remember, the top two will advance out of these heats. And all the other marbles who are eliminated, they get ranked based on their times as they compare to each other. The Cauldron getting some nice screen time there. Snowballs, Momo, Wisps, and Galactic. Snowballs and Team Galactic in the top and bottom lanes. Get out the early leads, then it's Snowballs. Now it's Galactic on the bottom with Momo in lane two. And that is how they will come across. That was a decent run there. 8 2 2 1, the winning time for Team Galactic. Team Momo, just a tenth of a second back. Team Momo would love to get things put together. So would some of these marbles. Shining Swarm, Raspberry Racers, Savage Speeders, you're gonna be watching them, and the Rojo Rollers. Raspberry Racers in lane two. Here come the Speeders, but they're in third right now, and that's where they will stay. Savage Speeders have been knocked out. They will not advance with an 8-5-9-9. That is well down the order. And we will have a new champion. Raspberry Racers in a bit of disbelief, even though they've done pretty well over the course of these games. We launched new merchandise for this season. We have designs for all of your favorite teams, as well as Marble League 2023 season shirts and phone cases. Those marbles down in the sand trap are busy today. There you see the order after our first four heats. Ninth through 16th, Rojo Rollers dead last. Savage Speeders down in 11th. Midnight Wisps when they make it to 9th. Both Savage Speeders and Crazy Cat's Eyes did not qualify. They cannot be satisfied with this result. I think they're scratching their heads a little bit. Well, you guys are eager, aren't you? And you're everywhere. Semi-final A, Bumblebees, Shining Swarm, Team Galactic, and the Thunderbolts. Out of the gate, it is the Bumblebees up in the top lane. Now Team Galactic surges to the front. They're gonna hold it down to the end. Thunderbolts come in second place. By a little over a tenth, they will go into the final. Wow, will the Thunderbolts have a chance to clinch their first medal in Marble League 23? Actually, after the last event, maybe I should not say that. <laughs> Still sorry about that. The O'Rangers fans, they are nervous. They're not buzzing around. They're not shifting uncomfortably. They are laser focused. Team Plasma, O'Rangers, Momo, and the Raspberry Racers. Down they come. Raspberry Racers hit the handoff first. 
A bump with Momo, who takes the lead. Team Plasma with the top lane holds second place, and they will move on. Raspberry Racers and the Orangers also tend to do pretty well, and uh, two remnants of the Fruit Circuit are eliminated together. This just swings back and forth so often you have to have every handoff work to perfection. Bumblebees get fifth and do not move on. Shining Swarm, Orangers, and Raspberry Racers fill out the next three spots. But who will come away with the medal as we get ready for the final? Four marbles side by side. Their teammates waiting in the blocks below. Momo in lane one, Galactic in lane two, Thunderbolts and Team Plasma. Plasma has the early getaway, Momo in the top lane, masters the first handoff. Oh, in the middle lane there, Galactic, and then loses it on the anchor. It's going to be a photo finish, but I think Team Momo got it. What a shoot up the middle in lane two, and then a botched handoff. Means that it is a close battle by four thousandths of a second. Team Momo captures the gold over the Thunderbolts. Look at that, their first gold medal in these games. Team Galactic captures the bronze. And Plasma just misses out. But wow, Team Momo. They once had the best chance, Team Galactic, to clinch the gold after they were leading through those first couple of handoffs. But you cannot take your eye off the prize. You have to focus, and that one misstep changed everything. Well, for a long time, Coach Black Hole has demurred on promoting Starry to Team Captain. Does this result change that conversation at all? Tough to tell. Congratulations to the top three of this event. Team Galactic, Thunderbolts, and Team Momo. Team Galactic gets the bronze, Thunderbolts get the silver, and Team Momo captures gold. So by a quick glance, I believe that none of these three teams have yet made it onto the podium in this Marble League. The Bumblebees hold on to the top spot over the Savage Speeders. Raspberry Racers have jumped up to third. Thunderbolts, despite a silver, really didn't move up at all. Team Momo and Team Plasma, they got some points too. But ouch, Thunderbolts get a medal and still sit dead last. Well, coming up, the maze run as we work our way into the home stretch of this Marble League. We hope that you will stay with us as we close this one out and crown a champion. Prepare to be amazed as we get ready for an event that was actually chosen to be brought back by our patrons. Yes, bringing some Hubelino tournament vibes in this series. This is the Maze Run. Of course, also featured in the past. It's an event that throws a lot at you and has many pitfalls that can get you both confused and sometimes dizzy. It's colorful, it is treacherous, it is a multiple pathway course down to the bottom and hopefully you make it down there. Oh, by the way, if you want to be in on some of those patron decisions, check out our Patreon page up in the upper right corner. This event, two heats, eight individual marbles apiece. The top four from each heat will move on to the final. If you do get stuck, there may be some help from ball bearings that are coming down, but hopefully you won't need it. As we take a look at our standings, the Bumblebees stay on top along with the Savage Speeders. Raspberry Racers jumped up over the Crazy Cat's Eyes into third. Some good movement toward the bottom from Team Momo and Team Galactic. We are getting to that point rather quickly when those teams at the bottom of the order may start to face elimination from being able to win the championship. 
We're not quite there yet, but it's coming. Oh, hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. Welcome inside of Super Hive Stadium, where we have witnessed so many incredible feats of Marvel Athletics to this point through 10 events of this planned 16 event. Marble League last time out in the five meter relay team Momo won over the Thunderbolts and team Galactic and we take a look at the lineup for this first heat just one captain in the field three reserves look at him pound into that opening section where it just throws you to either side you've got to pick your point and for a while at least you are committed the top three are shadowing each other is that a strategy that we will see as we come down through the rest of this, and oh, all three of them get caught on the side there, and this is where it starts to get interesting. Waspy and Rojo Uno are trying to get to the lead. And here we see, oh, look at this. First time that we've seen these uh, little shoots that seesaw back and forth and send marbles in different directions. Oh, look at all the way clear back there is Rozzy. And look, we're just about to get some finishers. First on through is Sparkle and Waspy Snowblast. Who will be the next one to come through? It is Zap, the reserve for the Thunderbolts. Everybody else will not move on. Then it comes down to times where you get classified relative to everybody else. So many pivotal moments here. This was just our first look at this course, and it's going to take a bit before we can really dissect what the best way is. Look at here, Zap challenging for the lead, and just like that, with the finish line nearly in sight, barely gets through in P4. See, being at the front in this event really doesn't guarantee you anything. You have to finish well. There are those seesaws. And even this final section, look at how many marbles are starting to get to it versus how long it takes for our finishers to make it down into that basin at the bottom. All right, we've had one look. Wait a minute. I thought I think we had everybody down here. Ah, it's one of the ball bearings deciding to show off a little bit. You don't see them very often, so let's see what they can do here. If a marble is stuck somewhere along the track, these are the helpers. So they need practice on the course, too. And given how long this track is, it's going to take a while for some of these marble athletes to make it back to the top, so they are giving them some runs. The question is, will any of the athletes study those times and those pathways to see if that is the way to go? Well, apparently, we have a slight delay hearing from the committee here and race organizers due to a swarm of bees making so much noise. The coaches and the other teams are complaining. <laughs> Enthusiastic are the attendees inside Super Hive Stadium, and those little bees are everywhere as you've seen before. All right, second heat. Here is the lineup. Two captains in this one, Speedy from the Savage Speeders and Kinoan from the Rangers. Those two old foes. We've seen them many times. Down they come, and who will make it to the front? Polar takes the opening few turns in the top spot, but everything can change rather quickly in this one. This field is much closer together than what we have seen. Not very many marbles taking the other lines opposite to each other, and here's where they all bottle up. That is a definite key moment in this track, and Polar is stuck, dislodged by one of the ball bearings, perhaps? Yes. Down they go. Oh, no, Polar is still up there and has fallen to dead last. Green Eye is back there from the Crazy Cat's Eyes, too. They are battling for dead last, but remember, you have to be in the top four to try to move on. The seesaws are up. Ah, now one of them comes down. Toward the bottom, Speedy from the Savage Speeders is meandering back and forth for those finishing shoots and gets shoved to the side by Astron. Speedy will make it, Kinoan does as well, but this battle for the fourth spot, not really a battle. Yella comes through and oh, the Bumblebees who were running very well instead just end up waggling back and forth. Bumble does not make it, 59.87 is that time. How will that compare? Polar doesn't make it either, and we actually have a DNF. Fanto from Team Plasma is trapped somewhere higher up on the course, immobile. Here were some key moments at this point. Green Eye is well back. You see Polar is stuck. 
And Team Plasma got a DNF. Let's see, currently down at the bottom of your screen in the middle there, keeps getting bumped to the side. Almost had help from a ball bearing too, but wow, another zero in a maze event. Not what they were hoping for. Here is the battle down toward the bottom. Great move there by Speedy to get in front of Astron. But then down here, the favor was repaid. Here comes Astron, bump, and finishes first. Kinnowin from the Orangers, also heading down there. Look at the Bumblebees, just in that red section. That is where it all came undone for them. They had a chance to get in front of Yella, and possibly ahead of Kinnowin as well, but just spent too much time up there, perhaps conversing with those little bees. Focus. <laughs> Well, for Team Galactic and for the Savage Speeders, their focus is now on the final. Last time around, we shared the inside story behind the block-pushing incident in our Patreon page and YouTube memberships. Would you like to read this and many more? Well, you can join today following the links in the description or by pressing the Join button under the video's title. There, you will find the best tiers to support our channel and get unique perks. Those seesaws maybe haven't proved to be as treacherous as we once thought in the initial viewing, but could they still throw a curveball into the finale that will decide the medal? Here we see the bottom of the order. Of course, Vanto down at the bottom, our only DNF. Green Eye in 15th. Ouch. Honey in 13th. That's another ouch. And Mo from Team Momo just missing out, still collecting seven points. Captain of Rojo Rollers, Rojo Uno, finishing just behind. Those little bees keeping watch and making sure this track is clean as can be. Sorry, I've tried to restrain myself these games. Two captains in the order, three reserves. Down they come. Who will win the medal in the maze run? Kinoen is out in front for now, but as we've seen, leads don't mean much. This point coming up, this is where everything changes. This little red section that you see coming up right now. Here is where we often see changes. Oh, one of the bees got knocked down, getting a little too close to the action. Sparkle, the reserve for the Shining Swarm, was out in front, but here comes Waspy from the Midnight Wisps. Zap from the Thunderbolts, briefly held second place and is now falling back behind the Orangers. One of the seesaws has been tripped. Now both of them have. Orangers on that top lane right now in position for silver, but now they take the lead just in the corner of the screen there. Heading down to this final section, the red was the undoing for the Bumblebees. Here come the O'Rangers. Kittle and goes straight through, and the O'Rangers have it. The captain just fended off an attack from Team Galactic and the Snowballs. And that is the O'Rangers' first gold medal of these entire games. Had to check back through just to make sure. And what a run for the captain of the O-Rangers. I had to look back through because it's almost hard to believe that the O-Rangers have not gotten a gold medal yet. They did get a medal back in the third event. That was a bronze from Clementon in the five meter hurdles. They also got a bronze in the triathlon just two events ago, but no golds thus far. And this defining moment in the race Three marbles side by side. There is where Kinoen decides to plunge forward and then just goes straight down the chute. No battling among those top three in the yellow portion. It was all done right up above. And that was good strategy by the O'Rangers trying to take that shortest line possible after studying the earlier runs. And so Kinoen captures gold over Astron of Team Galactic and the reserve Snowblast from Team Snowballs. Waspy just misses out on the podium. Zap comes through in fifth. Sparkle, Speedy, and Yella rounding out the top eight. This was a devious setup by my dad. Parts of it seemed relatively straightforward, and then all of a sudden, you realize you've taken the wrong pathway somewhere. <laughs> you didn't even realize it. Well done to the O-Rangers, hamming it up on the podium. 
Team Galactic and the Snowballs. Waving to the fans, waving to their supporters, to everybody who appreciates fine marble competition. What do our standings look like? It's really closed up at the top. Bumblebees and Savage Speeders now separated by just two points. Oh, Rangers jump up four. Oh, wow, quite a battle. Three former Marble League champions now placed in the top four. Crazy Cat's Eyes, they drop a couple. Team Galactic, they move up four. And as I said, we're getting closer to when we start mathematically eliminating marbles from being able to win the championship. Who will it be? Or who will find redemption? You know, some marble sporting events prefer formality and a handshake. But here at the Marble League, we prefer the wave. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This the Legion Wave March. We got a taster of this earlier with the qualifiers. But this is the real deal with championship implications on the line at a time when it becomes absolutely crucial to perform well because the number of events left is ticking down. As we take a look at the apparatus, the wave itself, you remember how this goes. The troughs each correspond to a points total. You want your marbles to go farther down into the last few troughs if possible, but if you ride those waves a bit too enthusiastically, you could end up in that red square down there that is worth a whopping zero. Don't do that. That was a fine example run, by the way, with three in the 10 for the blue team. This is one where you can get your elbows out a bit. This is a team event. I've seen in the practice runs for this, there have been some marble athletes trying to do it individually, saying, okay, what happens if we all just train ourselves? That's a wonderful view, by the way. What happens if we all just train ourselves and each individually shoot for one particular area? Doesn't quite work that way. Well, things have worked to a degree for all 16 teams thus far of this Marble League. Yes, every single team has at least one medal, and that is pretty remarkable. Up top, the Bumblebees leading the Savage Speeders, but that gap after the previous event came down to just two points. Things change very quickly here in the Marble League, and what will happen after the results of the wave. Two runs for each of these teams. The scores combined. Heat 1 sees the Bumblebees and Team Momo. Everybody keeping going. Lost 1 in the 7 and 1 in the 8 for Momo. Great job by the Bumblebees to put 3 in the 9 and 1 in the 10. They did lose 1 in the catch basin, but let's wait for the tabulations to begin. 43 to 37. Ah, that 0 did hurt them. And Team Momo with 43 goes up into first. They swap sides. Did the Bumblebees learn their lesson? Or do they have to push a bit harder? Oh, they've lost one in the five. That has not gone well for the hosts. Team Momo is going to have a nice two-run total here. Look at that, a five, a six. Eight, nine, ten. Forty-two. 38 in this one. After getting their first medal back in the relay race, Team Momo, they seem to be getting back on track. And just in the nick of time, too. Their fans happy with that result. Of course, being the first run, you have no idea how it is going to shake up to everybody else. Some of the rest of that everybody else begins right here. Raspberry Racers and the O-Rangers. Who's going to win this round? Oh, each team puts one in the catch base, and otherwise they're decently mirrored in some of the troughs. Oh, is there a marble back in the two? Oh, no, the O-Rangers. Oh, no. What happened there? Very unusual to see a marble lost in just the second wave. Wow. Tangerine. Just two points. I, I think there was some odd collision that may have happened there otherwise. If there wasn't, then, I don't know, Mandarin Orango. There have been rumors about them shaking up the lineup of the O'Rangers for events like this. Does that prompt them to do a bit more? 
Anonymous sources can only travel so far, even if it is coming from Orlando. This is a bit better for the O'Rangers. Two in the seven, two in the eight, and one in the ten. Those two tens down there for the Raspberry Racers, that's not too bad. They lose one early on. Look at how close this was, 42 to 40. The Raspberry Racers. They have knocked down the Rangers several times, both in Marble League in the past, and now they for now take the advantage in this particular battle as eyes turn to the Shining Swarm and the Thunderbolts. They're kind of getting in each other's way as they come through these waves and narrowly avoiding losing one down at the 10. The Thunderbolts have a nice point total here. Everybody past eight. 45 to 34. Nice start. That straight on view shows both the speed and also the placement, the precision that these marbles need to do well in this event. It is easy just to go hurtling down the course, but you are not gonna perform very well. You have to work together as a team, which the Thunderbolts have not done very well here. One in the catch and one all the way back in five. Helps the Shining Swarm lost one in six. Forty-one and thirty-one here. The combined totals put the Thunderbolts into third place. Shining Swarm just off the podium in fourth. Snowballs and Mellow Yellow come out now. I've seen these teams battle before. In the past, and we lose another one in the two there. Mellow Yellow is going to have a zero for one marble, and I think a two for the other. There it is. Wow. Yellum is quite frustrated by looking at it. Clear down there in the two trough. Wow, just left right on the peak. 28 points for Mellow Yellow. They need a really good recovery here. Snowballs not getting too wrapped up in that. They're a team that tends to focus on their own race, on their own performance these days. Down they come for heat number two. Mellow Yellow much better this time, even if they did lose one down there. Look at this, three snowballs have gone into the zero. Well, they certainly didn't have to take the risk to beat Mellow Yellow head to head, but maybe they were feeling that they needed something extraordinary here to challenge for the medal, and it's just a step too far. That's gonna be a very low total, lowest perhaps that we've seen all of this event. 15 points, wow! Puts them in dead last. Mellow Yellow only good enough for one spot above them. Eight teams have competed so far. Eight to go. Off into the distance we stare. As now the tabulations are complete. Oh, team Momo, the only team past 80 so far. Shiny Swarm and uh, Bumblebees, they have the same point total. But according to the rules, Shiny Swarm's run with the highest score is more. So they have the better position in the head-to-head. -head. So Team Momo has laid down the gauntlet of an 80-plus score. That is what it's going to take to dethrone them. And depending on how some of these other teams in the second half do, maybe even just to get the podium. Pinkies and Crazy Cat's Eyes right now. Remember last year, Pinky Toe staying at the peak between 9 and 10 points. Wow, four in the nine, three zeros for the Crazy Cat's Eyes. And that's going to be a lower point total than what we have seen so far. 15, no, the new bench low is 14. A six and an eight, and that's it. 43 is pretty good for Pinkies up there. If they can get near that 40 mark again, they are within distance of the medals. 
Crazy Cat's Eyes. They get strung out a bit, and it costs them. And this is going to be a good point total once again for the Pinkies. 10, 2 in the 9, and 2 in the 8. Forty-four. That means their two run total is 87. That is just too shy of the all-time record. That was done by Team Primary with 89 points in the qualifiers for this year's Marble League. But wow, Pinkies have done a great job to move into first place. Team Plasma and the Midnight Wisps. They're all together until the Wisps lose one early. Perhaps that contact brought by the Plasma Marble that's back in seven. And it ends up with two goose eggs for the Wisps. That is not going to be a nice run. That marble looked like just completely lost steam down in three. That is highly unusual. And the Wisps, 22, that is miles better than what we've seen. Ah, that view right there tells me that maybe some wall contact helped to cause that low finisher. Talking to the teams, you hear that often, stay off the walls. It's just a quick passing comment that can make all the difference. Oh, and I think that's befallen Team Plasma and the Wisps. There was a tie-up in the first few waves. And look at the chaos that is as a result. Well, that was a total mess. The uh, total of the two runs is good enough for fourth for Team Plasma even though that second run was not great. Is that the third time that we've gotten a two-pointer? Ah, look at this, a different strategy than what we've seen before. Normally you just see the marbles that are all lined up in a straight line, but this is different. And looking into the rules, I don't know that it's going to be disallowed. I, I, I'm not sure I'd have to dig in here. Savage Speeders coach quickly has appealed to the JMA for sure. Uh, Black Hole also came out. There have been some talking, and look, they've, they've reset. Yes, the formation is illegal. They have to start in a linear arrangement, is the uh, rule of law here. So a linear arrangement, I think, is where they were pleading their case, saying, well, linear compared to what? Is it all of the team members linear or each row? Either way, this was a good strategy by Savage Speeders. And if you notice that contact in the end there, didn't, uh, didn't get to talk about it all that much, but it appears there was some contact that forced Cosmo into the catch basin. I know Coach Black Hole is not very happy with this, but it is allowed by the rules. Remember at the beginning we said shoving is allowed. Contact is sometimes encouraged. Savage Speeders lose another one here. They were pretty neck and neck for most of that until that trailing marble and two were lost in the seven. Galactic and the Speeders both put one in the 10. And the Savage Speeders have moved into third place. Good fight back from Team Galactic. Still one point ahead of them in total points. Apparently the coaches, Black Hole and Quickly, are not very happy with one another. Some of that gamesmanship at the beginning with trying to change the formation, some of the contact. Not sure they're going to be shaking hands after this one. We hope so. But, uh... At the moment, not very happy. The Rojo Rollers and Gliding Glaciers come down now, and the Glaciers have two in the ten. Rollers put two in the nine. Otherwise, some marbles have been left farther back. Look at this. A six, a five, and a four. The Rollers total is good enough for 40. And 39 with the Glaciers, even with those early losses. Those two in the ten really help, and you can see the marbles that are successful staying off of those walls do tend to get down there a bit farther as they switch sides. How do they handle? Going from this direction. Down they come. The Glaciers come very close to putting two in the catch basin. Wow, they keep three in the ten. And with a 40 total before, this is going to be fighting for a medal. Oh, third place is all for Rojo Rollers and Fourth for Gliding Glaciers. Three tens was not enough to 
overcome that first run. And on the flip side, that means the Pinkies win gold. Yeah, they lost the one and the six. If that had bumped forward just slightly, things may be different. Both of those teams, though, pretty happy with their results. Both of those coaches, from my view up here in the commentary box, look pretty happy. Disaster for the crazy cat's eyes in that replay, but phenomenal for the Pinkies as they win gold in the Legion Wave March. Last year, they got close and won silver. They've done one better this year. 87 is the point total, two ahead of Team Momo, and one ahead of the Rojo Rollers, who got it on the final run. Well, the Pinkies heading into that final couple of heats. They knew they were guaranteed a medal, and it is a gold. I have expected there to be some protests after the way that this one went. Eventually, civility reigns. And so do the Pinkies, standing atop the podium with gold medals around all of them. Looking at the standings at the three-quarter mark, the Speeders are back up on top. The Pinkies jump five spots and make it into the top three. The Raspberry Racers stay exactly where they are. And look at the drops occurring elsewhere. Crazy Cat Size, the Wisps down three, Mellow Yellow down two. But wow, look at that top five. Four former champions and our hosts now sit in second place with the door still wide open. I know hives don't tend to have doors per se that can open and close, but hey, take it where you can. So much Marble League left. How will the ending play out? Somehow, just four events remain in the 2023 Marble League. And as we begin eliminating teams for contention, we come to the elimination race. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. This course, you'll see Marble by Marble, the last place finisher in each run, be eliminated. Question is, who will make it all the way to the end and claim pivotal points and medals as we come down into the final quarter of this entire tournament? The Pinkies, our defending champions, were the winners last time out in the Legion March Wave, following up a nice run by the Rangers in the Maze Run and Team Momo in the 5-meter relay. But this is slightly different. You see trap marbles. You see those ball bearings poised and ready to go if anything should trigger them. You see multiple pathways down this course as well. And here, the example run will give us a taste of what is in store. A bit of stratification before they jump into the honeycomb even more as they work their way down here. Will we see these ball bearings triggered? Yes, we will, and it shoots them backwards. You can see the energy stored there. Also, those drawbridges that get trapped down there that act as funnels to send you off. We have ball bearing cannons, we have a Gauss cannon, a scorpion tail. That's what those green ones were down at the bottom that narrows the pathway and as a result makes you have to travel just a bit farther to find an opening. So many ways that you can get tripped up. But with all of these marbles having their eyes on the prize, who knows? We'll come out on top. Look at this battle going. Pinkies jumping up five spots into a tie for third place with the Raspberry Racers. The Rangers are dropping. Rojo Rollers on the rise. And of course, at the top, the Savage Speeders getting in front of the Bumblebees once again, trying to deny the hosts glory that really few hosts have ever seen before. Here is our lineup for the elimination race. You can see looking down the way, a couple of reserves, three captains down the order, and off we go. This section, it's anybody's race as they start the dive down. I know Crazy Cat's eyes were farther down. It looks like Team Momo was briefly in the lead. Oh, we've already got finishers. This is lightning fast. And Shining Swarm, it looks like, is right there at the end. They are eliminated. Wow, just about 15 seconds is all it takes for us to get some finishers. And that was mighty quick. Yes, some of the traps were thrown. Oh man, that ball bearing came very close. A crazy cat size there. But Shining Swarm, dead last, not what they wanted. The management, uh, not too happy 
with that result. Down we come for try number two. We're going to be doing this quite a few times, as you can see, with all of these marble athletes running. Team Plasma is in front right now. Snowballs in the hunt. There comes Rojo Rollers with the win. And last across the line, Ruzzy from the Raspberry Racers, who you see pointed right on that honeycomb. And while back in uh, the 2022 Marble League, I believe Ruzzy was second place, in this case, eliminated in the second run. Wow, how fortunes flip. Two teams are out. We come down once again. Falling back there. They pick up the pace at Rojo Rollers all the way at the back. Savage Speeders have won the heat, but who is going to come last? Oh no, Gliding Glaciers. They got tripped up somewhere, and they will be eliminated. Iceberg. Oh, got nailed by one of those ball bearings. Was clear of elimination, but look at how far back that marble shot. And that is how the Gliding Glaciers got knocked out. Be literally with how solid that contact was. Yeesh. Rack them up. Three teams. Are out. Round four is underway. And once again, the rollers are back there briefly. It's crazy cat size all the way at the back. Red Eye trying to find a way forward. Savage Peters have won once again. This is a much closer heat. Oh, and Red Eye is eliminated. This was the first individual event, I believe, for Red Eye in these games. And it's not a dead last finish, but it might as well be when you have the standards of the crazy cat size. How about Savage Speeders? Two straight wins on those heats. With how many more rounds we have to go, is that a good strategy? And yes, you are safe, but you're expending a lot of energy to do it. And once again, they are flirting with the lead. Team Momo falls back, and there are some of the collisions with those trap marbles. Who got set backwards as they come out here? Oh, Savage Speeders are back there. They are eliminated. Oh, my goodness. Did Savage Speeders get knocked by a trap marble here? They're hitting in the middle quite frequently. Oh, man, they hit just about every obstacle they could in the bottom part of this course. Look at that. Uncanny. They go from winning two heats in a row to being out. They will finish in 12th. That does mean, as you see at the top of the provisional order right now, that the door is wide open for the Bumblebees to retake the top spot in the championship. But past successes are no guarantee of future successes in the elimination race. Down we come, and is that Pinky's well off the back? Take a look up front here. Good run by Bumble. Wow. Finished mighty quick. And the Pinkies! Oh, Pinky Panther, our bronze medalist from 2022, is eliminated. Similar problems, just bumping up against everything. Look at the chaos. Oh, it went right over one of the honeycombs. Wow. Well, thankfully, my little friend is okay there. Those bees are quite nimble. They're able to get out of the way at a moment's notice. Or get in the way, as it may be up here in the booth. <clears throat> anyway, all right, Pinkies have been eliminated. We already get some finishers down here. It's Team Momo. They drop through. Galactic, who's farther back? Is that Team Plasma fighting with the O-Rangers? O-Rangers are going to give it a run, but they cannot get by Team Plasma and are eliminated. Plasma just caught the edge of that scorpion tail. Look at how close that was across the line. A desperation lunge. And Glumo gets it at the line. Look at how many marbles are still on course right up until the very last instant. You have to keep going all the way to the end. Focus is your friend, but so is endurance in something like this. With each run, these marbles, you can tell, are learning a bit more about this course. 
but one wrong move can send them veering in the wrong direction or tripping those marbles like we just saw right there. It's the Team Galactic in last, it appears right now, and that is where it will stay. Across the line comes the captain, Cosmo. Cosmo has been eliminated. That was Starry's replacement, of course. There's a lot of drama in that team at the moment, wondering about replacements and about are certain things punishments for less than ideal results. It's all speculation. But, oh, not even close on that one after a photo finish, the one before. If you're going to lose, at least give it a close go. But they were unable to do it in this one. Several marbles skipping their way over that little maze before they dive down into the honeycomb. Yellow Yellow out in front right now. Thunderbolts, they shoulder them aside. Oh, are the Bumblebees going to be eliminated? Yes, they will. That one was another close finish, this time with Team Momo. Ah, and just getting shouldered aside by two marbles was Stinger. It all came down here in the bottom of this course. Watch on the left side there. Right there, two marbles getting by. Rojo Rollers were one of them. The Bumblebees still get some nice points, especially compared to the current championship leaders, the Savage Speeders. But will it be enough? Let's see where everybody else shakes out. The order is so tight up front. Round 10. We are halfway through. Snowballs are back there currently in last. Nice straight pathway for the Rojo Rollers and Mellow Yellow. Oh, and the Thunderbolts, they get tripped up and they go no further. How many times has Team Plasma, by the way, just barely made it? Wow, Snowballs were in trouble there. Look at how far back they are, but watch in the middle of the screen there, that glance, and then right there, solid into the honeycomb. And that gives the Snowballs Snowdrift the path toward advancement. So now, Bolt from the Thunderbolts finishes seventh, then Stinger, Cosmo, Mandarin from the Arrangers, and the Pinkies come in 11th. So now down to the final six. Two captains in the mix. Also got a reserve in there. And medals up for grabs. Here we go. Round 11. Down they come. Six remain, and it's Rojo Rollers well off the back right now. They're going to have to dig deep to keep going. Some of the trap marbles have already come around. Here comes Mellow Yellow and Team Plasma. Roll Rollers are still farther back there, but they get in front of the Midnight Wisps. And they both go to the same wall. That guarantees the Wisps. They're done. Rojo Rollers move on. Look at how far behind they were at several points in this run. That was a nice recovery. That was also, if, if we're deeming this the final sector of the course, great run by our top two right there. They steered clear of everything, kept the speed up. That may be a useful line to take as we head into the medal round. Team Momo, they now find themselves at the back here along with Team Plasma. Momo still back there being hounded by one of those trap marbles. And they will not be able to move on. Snowballs well out in front of them. And Team Momo are silver medalists from one event to go in the Legion March Wave. They are eliminated. Four to go. Here in round 13. Down they come. Mellow Yellow once again out in front. Team Plasma back there trying to keep their distance from the Snowballs. Snowballs, though, are definitely moving through that portion of the track. And this is going to be very close here down to the bottom, and it's Snowballs. Their hopes of a medal just melted away. They tried to go that outside line around those final five honeycomb. Watch them here. They go from the top of the course all the way down to the bottom. Bit of contact with Plasma. That perhaps sealed their fate. Unable to move on in the direction that they needed. 
Three marbles left, guaranteed medalists. Blumo, Yella, and Rojo Uno. But who will finish where? The whole world is trying to pick up the speed. Team Plasma in the middle of the course. Not where you want to be, but look at how far back Mellow Yellow are. Rojo Rollers, they come through. This will not be close. Mellow Yellow, they will get the bronze. Yellow was never in touch with the top two. Perhaps fatigue setting in after all of these runs. It is relentless, this event. Marbles who have done it before, they benefit from that experience, knowing both how to manage their energy, and also how to play the strategy game just a bit. Two marbles side by side. This will determine our gold. Rojo Rollers, Team Plasma. Down they come and it's Team Plasma out in front. Rojo Rollers, they contact them and they're shadowing them pretty closely. Now they move to the far side of the course, nearly setting off a trap marble with the Rojo Rollers. Trouble in the middle though for Plasma. They just get under one of the Scorpion's tails, but wow, what a move by Rojo Uno. Shooting by for the gold. Look at the speed differential when they get down here across the line. Well back. Lumo just missed that scorpion tail, but what an excellent pathway that Rojo Uno took. Wow. I think Lumo probably assumed that after getting by that scorpion tail, that, that marble had the race won. But Rojo Uno, the captain of the Rojo Rollers, could not be stopped. What a finish that was. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our Patreons. The message says, happy 26th birthday, Sean and Nick. Team Momo and Crazy Cat's Eyes Forever from Siena. Queen of Queens is in shock about that as well, but as the final standings work their way on through, calculations are done. Do the Bumblebees find themselves back up in the top spot? Rojo Rollers in the meantime, that is their first gold medal since 2016, and the third gold in its career. 2016, two golds, by the way, in balancing and the high jump. The Bumblebees have done it. They are back on top, and the Rojo Rollers, now they get into the top three with that gold. And wait a minute, look at this. It's not just the Bumblebees on top. They're tied. 139 apiece. Wow, looking down the order, Raspberry Racers dropped two. Crazy Cat Size have dropped another three. Shiny Swarm, they're down two. Good point totals for everybody in this entire league so far. But uh, they're not out here for points. They're out here for a championship. With three events to go in the 2023 Marble League, you can kind of consider this a sort of moving day. And there's gonna be plenty of moving here in the G-Force Endurance as it makes its triumphant return to our screens, but its debut in the Marble League. Last time out in the elimination race, the Rojo Rollers won gold after 2,655 days that's the last time that they stood at the top step of a podium. That's a heck of a long time. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. Welcome back inside of Super Hive Stadium. The G-Force Endurance, the Sand Rally, and then the Honey Dome Grand Prix is all that remain in this Marble League. This G-Force Endurance, you may remember how this goes. The eight teams that will participate, among them Midnight Wisps, Mellow Yellow, a lot of eyes on the Rojo Rollers on this one, but they will be deployed onto this spinning table. You can see these very angular curbs that shoot them off and send them hard across the platform. Sometimes they'll actually bump against those mechanisms that launch them. They can come back on. That's okay. You can leave the arena and come back on as long as you stay on because that is the goal. The eliminated marbles ranked by their last marbles time in the arena. So you can see in this case, Green, they've got two on at that moment when the last red one veered off. 
and they are the victors. How about this? The host bumblebees are tied atop the standings with the savage speeders. Speeders, no gold medals. That really doesn't help in case there's going to be any tiebreakers coming in later. 2022 Marble League champs, they're doing pretty well. Crazy cat size, they're kind of going in the other direction. You can see those yellow numbers that are pointing them downward in the order. Not what they want to see. Our hosts will get us started here with the crazy cat size. Off they come. The cats are very tenuous, working their way toward the middle. If you remember how that went in the original iteration of this, you could take your time getting to that bell because once that contact was made, once the other marbles started getting in the fray, everything gets quite chaotic. Bumblebees are holding on in the middle there, but look at how many crazy cat eyes are still in. Paths crisscrossing. We could see some contact between them. It's got two, three now, two for the crazy cat eyes. They will come out on top in this one. Green Eye dings the middle of the bell and is just taking that time up. 38 seconds now past 40. And if you look at where we were in the original iteration of this, we did see some 40 plus second times. Sublime from the Limer setting that one in heat one. That was really one of the best of the entire tournament. And this is quite a benchmark to beat. Green Eye finally exits stage left after what is a rather impressive performance here in heat number one. No doubt about it for the crazy cat size, they will move on. And this tournament, that is all you want to do at least for this particular event. In the tournament, you don't want to be eliminated, so you want to keep marching forward. Gliding Glaciers, they know something about marching. Mellow Yellow. But then they've got a 3-2 formation. A couple of those marbles almost appear stationary on this spinning platform. They all hug the middle. Try to hug it as long as you can before momentum starts carrying you outward. Here they all splay. And so far, there's a lot of yellow on that board, but it's quickly exiting. What's this? Two marbles for Mellow Yellow. They will hold on, and they will move on. Whew. Now, this is a point that you can think about here. Green Eye showboating all that much in the first heat. You don't have to set a time that ranks among everybody else if you are going to advance. So the moment that you know that you have moved on, just get out of there. Save your energy. Do what you can to make sure that you're going to have enough in the tank for some of these later matchups. Thunderbolts are doing a very good job here of holding toward that middle line. As the Shining Swarm, they begin to head outward. A couple of dings of the bell for the Thunderbolts. They still have good trajectories on each of those marbles. Two to one it is right now, and now they will hold on. Just as it goes one apiece, the Thunderbolts, they will get the win. And that's the kind of exit that you need. Maybe a couple of laps extra from what was absolutely necessary but the Thunderbolts will move on the Shining Swarm. They will go no further. Shining Swarm not those in that test run that they did, the Midnight Wisps. They were there. See if that experience gives them an advantage. Everybody right around that bell as they start spinning outward now. Speed's increasing. We start seeing those slingshots. Those curbs are devious. Sometimes that can help you, sometimes it can hurt you because you're not in control of your own destiny. Team Plasma, they did just enough to move on there. A few extra seconds is all it took before they vacated the platform. So watch out for them later on in this tournament because obviously they're going to have a bit more energy, I would think. This is all speculation on my part. I've not been on the spinning platform. I don't know that I would want to considering how dangerous it looks out there. At this, they're just watching each other. From side to side, Pinkies and Momo, now they begin to intermix. Past the 15 second mark, we've lost one marble for each of the teams. Pinkies have another one at exit. Momo's gonna keep three on the board. And the time will keep ticking away. They don't really need it, but Team Momo will advance. close this was. There were a couple of marbles that are just sitting there right on the edge, right there. You can see on the right side of your screen. Oh, wow. That was almost like Pinky Panther was hiding right on the edge, ready to come back on. Good catch by Team Momo to say, not so fast. You're not coming back out here just when we think we've got this thing won. O-Rangers. Raspberry Racers. 
Neither of these two teams were in the test run. Look at how far out some of those Raspberry Racers are going. It's 2-1 to one right now in favor of the Racers. Now it's one apiece. The O'Rangers get out. And the Raspberry Racers eliminate the O'Rangers once again. That is just going to continue onward. This rivalry between them. Especially where they are in the standings. There's bragging rights. There's past where they used to run together. And now Savage Speeders and Team Galactic. Galactic, they inch in and then slowly walk away. Let's see if they can get back toward the middle here. No, they're all losing it. So far, the Savage Speeders have better pathways between their marbles, but two of them get lost very quickly. It's one marble apiece. Quite an eccentric run there. Oh, Team Galactic, they were done, but they just pulled themselves back onto the platform. The battle went on for just a bit longer, but it wasn't enough. That was an impressive Herculean effort to fight momentum and get back on the board. They nearly advanced, but Team Galactic, they are out. Savage Speeders will move on. Starry using that starting gate as that slingshot to pull them back onto the disc. Wasn't quite enough. Rojo Rollers, third place in that test run. Taking on the Snowballs. A lot of eyes on the Rojo Rollers. Can they capitalize on the momentum that they once felt? Just one event to go. Everybody intermingle those snowballs blending into the disc. Rojo Rollers fans, oh, they're not happy that they can't see the snowballs. Is this an advantage? The snowballs are just kind of hanging out there. Rojo Rollers are swinging around. These are two team captains, in fact. Rojo Uno and Snowy, and Snowy will keep it on the disc longer with a ding of the bell. A ding of victory. And passing the 45 second mark. That is interesting because look at from this top view. It is very difficult to see those marbles, at least from our vantage point. And I think some of the fans were confused. Where did those marbles go? Well, they're still out there. And at this point in the replay, it's just one on one, two team captains. And that's a good strategy from Snowy, just hanging out in space. Not trying to go too eccentric, not relying on those walls either. So those who are eliminated, they are ranked by time. Midnight Wisps come dead last. Rangers 15th. Oof. Host the Bumblebees down there in 10th. Rojo Rollers, they just miss out. They will not advance. We take a look at Crazy Cat's Eyes and Mellow Yellow in our first quarter final. Mellow Yellow were knocked out in the first round by the Jungle Jumpers in that off-season tournament. Can they make it out of the quarters here? Crazy Cat's Eyes, remember they expended a lot of energy, Green Eye did, trying to stay on for as long as possible, perhaps not knowing that you didn't need to do that. Green Eye still hanging in there though, Blue Eye is at the center, and it will be Crazy Cat's Eyes, wow. Blue Eye gets Crazy Cat's Eyes into the semifinals. Good defending by Blue Eye in that one. There was a lot going on watching Green Eye, watching some of the others, but Blue Eye, I think this is energetic celebration right now more than showboating as the Crazy Cat's Eyes have vanquished Mellow Yellow and they are off to the semifinals. Quarterfinal number two, Thunderbolts and Team Plasma. Just sizing each other up right now, staying on opposite sides of the bell. Now they begin to cross, and we see some of those elbows getting out, moving marbles away. We've already had some contact and losses here. What on earth? Team Plasma just lost all of their marbles in about one second, all within each other. What happened there? What on earth? They've got four marbles there, and they all follow the same pathway. Oh my gosh, did they put their trust in that leading marble, hoping that they were gonna find a wall and stay on it, and then realized there's nothing there. Oh, that is cataclysmic for Team Plasma. My goodness, Momo fighting now with the Raspberry Racers. 
Momo's already lost a couple. Raspberry Racers, they have all of theirs out there. Now they've lost two, now they've lost three. Team Momo from the left. Using a similar strategy to what we saw with Starry from Team Galactic edging off and then getting right back on the platform just as the Raspberry Racers thought they had that event won. Maybe that is a criticism of getting off the platform as soon as you know you've won, quote unquote. You don't know. Watch that off the left side there, just staying near the edge. That ended up working out pretty well. Deciding our final runner for the semifinal, Savage Speeders and the Snowballs. Snowballs staying close together, maybe trying to blend in once again, but look at how much the Savage Speeders are making contact with them. Even if you can't see them, if you can feel them, that might help. They're pushing some of them off. Savage Speeders have one in the middle, and is it gonna work? I'm watching that marble off to the top side. It will. Savage Speeders, that was good strategy to get the snowballs out. If you can't see them, make sure you have physical contact with them and start pushing them out any chance you get. That's why the Savage Speeders are experts here in the Marble League. The next eliminated teams, Mellow Yellow, Snowballs, Raspberry Racers, and Team Plasma. This is actually the first time that the Snowballs, I believe, got a double-digit score in a team event. <laughs> I don't know if, uh, if that is absolutely true, but by my quick glancing, I don't think the Snowballs have actually gotten more than 10 in a team event. Well, what's happening here? Oh, we've got another streaker. Not good. This is a dangerous one to get out there. Look at security immediately getting around him. Good job there. I know a lot of us look at that disc, that arena, and think, maybe I could do that. I'll tell you, that streaker did not make it very far. Thank goodness on a couple of accounts. All right, semifinal A, Crazy Cat Size and the Thunderbolts. Early contact there. You don't really hear the bell dinging so soon. Whoever wins this one will make it to the final. The other one will be relegated to the third place Match fighting for a bronze. Oh, what a good curvature to keep the Thunderbolts in it. Watch here. A lot of Thunderbolts are starting to exit. Contact down there on the bottom. There goes another one. Look at right there in the middle. Oh, we just lost it right before the uh, replay was done. But that was a good effort to keep at it. Semi-final B, Momo and the Speeders. Speeders, are they going to use the same sort of strategy as they did against the Snowballs. Look at Momo. They're keeping their distance. They're not going to let the speeder shove them off. They're trying to keep this in their own hands. Oh, it's going to the side. Very close right now. And it will be the Savage Speeders. The Speeders were neck and neck with them for a while. It's missing ever so slightly on some of that contact. But right there at the end, look at the nudges that sent them. Actually, probably two revolutions ahead of time. That's what set them up for those quick exits. All right, this is for the bronze. Crazy Cat's Eyes and Team Momo. Neither of these teams were in the off-season tournament, but they have made it to the medal round. Crazy Cat Size, oh look at how frenetic it's getting for the Shining Swarm. Crazy Cat Size for a moment had four marbles left. And they are our bronze medalists. Blue Eye once again taking laps of celebration, ringing the victory bell. It's not a gold, it's not a silver, but only two teams in this whole tournament will end their runs victorious. One of them is the gold medalist and one of them is the third place bronze medalist. Crazy cat size, they get it. Congratulations, but now, who will get the gold? We let our finalists catch their breath. Thunderbolts, Savage Speeders in the final. Out they come, Savage Speeders. Wiggling their way into the middle. Look at how close some of those Thunderbolts are staying to the bell. They're trying to hold on as long as they can. Speeders have already lost one. More are being lost right now. More Thunderbolts are on the board at the moment. Three to one. Oh, and they've exited it. This is going to be very close. I think the Savage Speeders held on. They did. 
Watch how close this was if we get the full replay here. It is three to one. Thunderbolts right here. There goes one. There goes two. There goes three. Savage speeders. Wow. What a recovery. And what on earth caused that for the Thunderbolts? Was it a moment of thinking that they actually had this one? Another one of those you have to fight all the way until the end. Savage Speeders, that is their first gold medal of these games. Thunderbolts, they lose it, but they still get the silver. So there you see all of the marbles, their collective times together. And I can tell you that uh, there are gonna be a lot of celebrations right now. I believe that was Velocity who hung on the longest and finally got that gold medal for him. What a fierce battle for the championship. And with the hosts finishing so far down the order, you have to wonder if this really sets the tone for what could be a run at another title. Crazy Cat's Eyes, they get the bronze, Thunderbolts the silver, and the Thunderbolts dedicate their medal to one of our patrons, Thunderbug80, and his girlfriend who recently had a birthday. Look at this, now we start to see mathematically eliminated teams. 11 remain, but the margin grows bigger and it's actually swinging in favor of the Savage Speeders. They were tied coming into this one and look at that margin over the Bumblebees now. Two events remain after this one. Who will make it to the end? Tradition is strong with the host Bumblebees, both within their hive and in the overall of competition for Marble Athletics. That's why they have chosen Event 15 of the 2023 Marble League to be the Sand Marble Rally. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. 11 teams remain eligible to win the championship. They can still stand on the top step of the podium down there in the bottom from 12th through 16th. They cannot win it all, and that includes former Marble League champion the Midnight Wisps. Some are just teetering on the edge of elimination, others trending in the right direction. It makes the marble choice for this event all the more important. Seven team captains in the lineup. You see a couple of reserves in there as well. The reason why this carries even more import is because this is a double whammy. The results of this event will decide the starting grid for the Honey Dome Grand Prix. That is the final event of the Marble League. So if you win this one, you get pole in the Honey Dome. Two events will be run. This is the first, and the best time of each will decide our champion and who will get the gold medal. Who dangerous moves as we get started here. Here comes Red Eye with a challenge for the lead. Already, that was great defending up front from the Snowballs. That's the captain, Snowy. We also see Shining Swarm holding up a train back there. Look at the rocks in the middle of the course. That seemed to have tripped up Team Plasma and the Savage Speeders. Plasma currently holding that line. Here are the Midnight Wisps at the front of a four marble grouping. That's Wuspy trying to keep them all behind going high on the wall and can't get it done. Loses a position, becomes right back, contact and slowing to a crawl. Are all the marbles gonna get through that? Here's an inside move. Red Eye trying to make the pass complete. We just go off camera for it. I think Snowy was holding a great defense. Look at how spread out the field is. This is important because it's the time that qualifies you, depending on where you finish in the two races. Savage Speeders, oh Rangers were battling there. Tangerine, oh Wizzy, I think is out. Was that Wizzy that went off of the course? I believe it was for the Savage Speeders. Here's a battle here with Bumblebees. This is Hive trying to keep things going. Meanwhile, back up front, the move has been made. Red Eye, but wow, Snowy gets by just before the finish line. And that was a closer battle for third place than what we originally thought. Wow, talk about saving that 
perfect timing to get the move done. Now the question is, what will that be in the overall after we run the second race as well? Look at him bounding across that finish line. Wow, apparently five DNFs. Look at this. Yeah, marbles, we're waiting for him. It's not coming. Timing and scoring saying there have been five DNFs. A couple of the teams are a bit shocked at that. And they realize that this second race becomes all the more important. Of course, you can have a DNF because it's the best time of the two races. And a 137.71 is the mark to beat from Snowy. Three captains in the top four. But look at down below. Momo, Savage Speeders, Raspberry Racers, Plasma, and the Pinkies, they're all out. And right there, the Pinkies, they got caught, I think, on that very slow turn when everybody started to bunch up. Wow, that could have implications. Well, however your team finished in this one or will finish in the Marble League, check out our merchandise online. You can scan the QR code and find what is best for you and your friends. Remember, the holidays are coming up. These make perfect gifts and show your support for your favorite team. Starting order jumbled up once again. In the blocks, ready to go as they funnel toward the start. And we are underway. Oh, disaster up there. Who was that? Was that Team Galactic that I think shot to the lead and then stalled out? They got high on the wall and came to a complete stop. This is Team Momo trying to make the most after that DNF in the first race. Is that Red Eye back up there again? Splits between the two marbles and has the lead. Red Eye who is more known for prowess in Marbula 1 than San Marble Rally, has gone to the point here. That is in front of Rojo Quattro for the Rojo Rollers. 137 is that time to beat. The Marbles have seen this course once before. Have they learned from it? Especially this slow corner here. Is everybody going to get through? Team Plasma just crawls on through it, but does keep going. The Arrangers were back there as well. This, the leader, Red Eye. Is anybody going to challenge? Swinging around the right-hander. Now back to the sharper left. Nobody in the picture right now. A little bit farther back. Savage Speeders, they're still going. A Rangers in there. Rojo Quattro is trying to hold back the Bumblebees. They would love to have a better finish and a good qualifying result as it passes on from this one into the Honey Dome Grand Prix. Getting down to the bottom part of this course. Time ticking away. Everybody slowing down once again. Momo moves to the side, can't keep that speed going. The Pinkies get by, and now there's contact between them. Red Eye up front wins race two. And is that time good enough, not just for pole in the Honey Dome Grand Prix, but for this event, is that good enough for gold? Now it was a great battle there. Coming across the line. Here was our winner. Pretty wide margin. All eyes turn to the clock. The glaciers up in there. There's a battle of snow and ice. Underbolts. There comes Team Plasma. How many DNFs did we have in this one? Uh, still some marbles coming through. And these were some of the winning lines taken by Red Eye. And it's a 134-42. Nearly everybody improved on their times. Red Eye has done enough to capture the gold, but where does everybody else fall out? I believe Pinky Toe with the 136. That's better than the best time in race one, so that should be good enough for silver. I don't want to speak too soon on anything else. Fans were treated to a great view from there. The ball shot underneath of them carrying tremendous speed. You can see just a little bit of moisture on the track. Oh, and it did catch out Team Galactic. I think that was clear up at the top. And there are our final standings. Red Eye gets the gold, Pinky Toe the silver, and Snowy, by virtue of that first race, gets the bronze. I think there were some surprising results there. And remember, that sets the order for the Honey Dome Grand Prix, the final event of these games. And before we go, just want to give a quick Patreon shout out. The message says, hi, Sandra. I hope we have a great trip together. I love you, Bodo. That's awesome. Hey, enjoy event 16 on the train. You too. Congratulations to the top 
Championships can be won and lost on the circuit, but you had to get through the sand first. And doing well here doesn't necessarily mean that it will carry over to success on the track in a repeated lap setup. So if anything, this just really throws another wrench in the works. We don't really know how this is going to go. Now, obviously, Crazy Cat's Eyes, they know the track Marbula One style very well. What will that do to their championship hopes, though, as we wait for the tabulations? 25 points in the Sand Rally. Here we go. Standings after Event 16, just five teams can win it. Savage Speeders, the Bumblebees, the Pinkies, the Crazy Cat's Eyes, and the Rojo Rollers. 20 points separate them all. Who will come out as champion? The top tier athletes thrive under pressure. When it all comes down to one single event to decide the championship, this is when they are in their element. And there is no higher level of competition than what we see here at the Marble League. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. I hope you are all huddled around your screens just like we are all huddled nice and cozy here in Super Hive Stadium, ready for the Honey Dome Grand Prix. This is event 16 in what has been a tumultuous championship hunt for many teams. They have been eliminated. However, there are just a few that remain. Five teams can win the championship. The Savage Speeders lead the way over the Bumblebees, the Pinkies, the Crazy Cat's Eyes, and the Rojo Rollers. Here are the standings. While those are only eligible for the championship that are not in yellow, there are quite a few other teams that can still reach the podium. Yes, they may need some help to do so, but there is still so much pride on the line for these teams that have worked sometimes for their entire lives to get to this moment. Ninth on down, they cannot reach the podium. Everybody else, hope springs eternal. The Honey Dome Grand Prix, they are in the starting blocks, different than Marbula One in that, so as not to overload this event in terms of importance and the sand event that preceded it, no extra point for pole and fastest lap. There you see all of those in the lineup. Captains, reserves, team members who are carefully chosen for their prowess at this discipline. And we're rolling. Red Eye on pole, but has lost two, now three positions heading into turn one. Pinkies, Midnight Wisps, they get by. Here they come fighting back. No, Crazy Cat's Eyes can't get up there. Red Eye shouldered out onto the curbs and is trying to play catch up here. Losing even more positions and also fighting in their snowballs. They fall backward, but it's Pinkies who are out in front as they come through the honeycomb for the first time. Great exit by Red Eye, only to hit the curb and give up P1 to the snowballs. We'll talk about championship permutations as we go along through this, but it's two hundredths of a second between Snowballs and Crazy Cat's Eyes in what is scheduled to be a 13-lap race. Crazy Cat's Eyes, they need some help, and they need to win this race if they hope to have a shot at the championship. Bumblebees are up there, however, and now they lose a bunch of positions. Is that Midnight Wisps that just headed up to the top spot? Yes, it is. The Wisps through the honeycomb here, and there goes Bumble. The captain of the Bumblebees appropriately handling that section very well. Trying to catch the draft as they go down that backstretch and up the elevator. Crazy Cat's Eyes back in third. Team Plasma, Pinkies, they're also fighting for the championship. Back by Team Galactic, Thunderbolts, Snowball, Shining Swarm, Rangers, Rojo Rollers who basically need to win or that's it. Raspberry Racers, Gliding Glaciers. Team Momo, Savage Speeders, our championship leaders second to last right now by Mellow Yellow. Up front, a slow pace being set, and Bumble has had enough of it. Wants to dictate the pace and try to bring this one home for the Bumblebees. They definitely need some help in this one as they lead by just under one second here. If they win, they need the speeders to get sixth or lower. That is currently happening. They need the Pinkies to get lower than second. That is currently happening. Wisps now in second place, trying to keep the Pinkies back behind. The Pinkies, they need to win, and then need Savage Speeders down there as well. There goes Midnight Wisp back up in front, as we are now on lap four. Savage Speeders have fallen to dead last. The championship may be slipping away from them. 
they can finish in last, but they need some help from some of the other teams. Speedy, once one here at the Honey Dome. Cannot count that marble out, even though the laps are ticking away. Midnight Wisps up at the front with Wispy leading the field over Bumble. Then it's Team Galactic with Starring, who also does very well in Marbula One. The top three, the top four have all tightened up as they come to the line. Bumble goes to the inside, but can't make the move. They'll be side by side, Midnight Wisps and Bumblebees. And Wispy gets by. Nice double move there by Crazy Cat's Eyes to take second place as they come to the bee dance. This waggle portion really stratifies the marbles. It's a technical section, and you can see Bumble is used to it, using that home track advantage. Through the honeycomb, Wispy can't stay off of the walls. Does that help Bumble to close that gap? Just a few lengths between them. So we take a look at the rest of the field. Some hitting hard against that wall. Savage speeders remain in dead last, but this is a great battle up front. Midnight Wisps and the Bumblebees. Red Eye is also up there for Crazy Cat Size, waiting opportunistically to make a move if anything goes wrong. Pinkies are also up there. They know that their Marble League hopes have to start swinging in the right direction soon. We are on lap seven, now halfway through this Grand Prix. The final event in the Marble League, four minutes in. Savage Speeders remain second to last. Bumblebees, they take the lead over the Midnight Wisp. Crazy Cat Size get by into second place. You briefly saw it flash through your screen right there. And there we see Red Eye continuing to march forward. Crazy Cat Size must get first or second in this race if they hope to win. Bumblebees, who they are chasing, they have to get top three, but they need some help. Mellow Yellow was briefly fighting up there as well. Look at this gap. Bumblebees have a second and a half over Crazy Cat Size, just a few laps remaining. They would need the Crazy Cat Size to finish second or lower, I believe. We'll wait for the official timing and scoring results. Down they come, and we're almost getting into desperation time for the likes of the Pinkies. Savage Speeders have only gained one spot. Bumble got a silver earlier in these games in the five meter sprint. In the Honey Dome, his best is second place. And now, chasing the gold here. There you see the live standings. Pertinent, indeed. Bumblebees currently would win the championship. Savage Speeders would finish seven points back, two ahead of Crazy Cat Size. That is even with the Savage Speeders running so low in the standings right now. They sit 14th out of 16. Contact right there. You saw the Midnight Wisps. They are slipping backward, battling with the Pinkies. Rojo Rollers are also in there. Remember, I said they basically need to win the championship, and then they need Savage Speeders to get lower than 12th. Well, that second part is happening, but not the first, and that is the most important. Bumble's lead has come down up front. Crazy Cat's Eyes Red Eye is holding in second place. Pinkies back there in third with Pinky Panther. Wispy for the Midnight Wisps. Oh, here we go. Pinky Panther trying to make a move on Red Eye. Can't get that one done. These are both champions in their own right. There's a lot on the line, of course. Even if you don't win this Marvel League, there's auto qualifying chances. There's where you shake out for other events that determine whether you will qualify for the Marvel League. Crazy Cat Size, two seconds back right now. Pinkies, two and a half. Midnight Wisp, Rojo Rollers come next. Mellow Yellow, Team Galactic, Shining Swarm. Fighting Glaciers, Team Momo, Savage Speeders have gained a couple. And the Thunderbolts get by as I say that. Snowballs, Raspberry Racers, or Rangers, and Team Plasma rounding out the field with just two laps to go. Here's the lead. The battle for it has come down as Red Eye is hounding Bumble through the honeycomb. But the home turf is defended nicely. Bumblebees trying to bring home a championship in front of their home fans, hosting the Marble League. It's never been done. Red Eye with a nice head of steam here on lap 13, the final lap. Red Eye tries to make the move to the B dance, goes outside, but is sealed off. We'll have more opportunities 
Bumble fighting like crazy, but Red Eye gets it done. Crazy Cat's Eyes have taken the lead and put themselves into prime position to win the championship. Does Bumble have anything left in the tank? Red Eye onto the straightaway. They've fallen back from first to 11th in the standings, and now Crazy Cat's Eyes have clawed their way back to become Marble League champions. What an effort by Red Eye, and what an effort from the Crazy Cat's Eyes as a whole. They have been one of those teams that I mentioned at the beginning who bounded their way up and down the standings. They started so well and then began to slide backwards. They won the Honeycomb Team Pursuit. They got bronze in the steeplechase. And then things started to turn. They went downhill. They had a brief resurgence at tug of war in event number six and then disappeared from the podium all the way until event 14 when they got bronze in the G-Force Endurance. From there, it has been consistency. They won the Sand Rally with Red Eye, and that earned pole position here, but that didn't necessarily help that marble because Red Eye was trailing for most of this race, and here, the definitive battle that started it all. Back and forth they went, and here is the championship winning move Oh, that was a sellout, acting like Red Eye was going to go to the outside. Bumble moved to defend, and then shot at the apex. Red Eye takes the lead and would hold it all the way across the line. By the way, if you enjoyed this, check out some of our Patreon content and so much more on our online store, and of course, the rest of the YouTube channel. The Crazy Cat's Eyes, they get gold in this event, and they will claim the championship in Marble League 23. The Red Eye did so much work over the course of this 16 event drag out fight. In the hunt for most valuable marble for sure. And once again, they are standing on the top step of the podium Bumblebees get second place, one step behind. And they, oh, by a single point, finish second in the overall standing. Still a tremendous effort by the Bumblebees. Their fans are so proud of them. Savage Speeders drop down two spots in that one event. Very uncharacteristic for them. They're still happy to get third. But wow, so many twists and turns that this Marble League has taken. And we are thrilled that you have been here with us this entire time. Ready for the closing ceremony? Thank you so much for watching. I'm Greg Woods. So long, everyone.
light for glory. Guiding glaciers, light for glory. Guiding glaciers, light for glory. The glaciers, light for glory.